Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Savage Saturdays here on the Drinking Bros podcast. I'm your host, Derek Whita. Joining me, as always, the man with the plan. It's Owen. It's Owen. How are you doing today, Owen? I'm good. That's good. That's good. I'm having a great fucking morning, honestly. Yeah? I am. I am. Um, I'm on deload week. My training is... I woke up, I woke up this morning at 5.30. Yep. I was done working out by 7.20 in the morning, and my workout was fucking easy, and I just felt good. I that's felt like, ready. It's like three hours shy of when you're usually done with your workout. I know, and I needed I needed to feel good today because we have a guest. We do. And it's someone that I've been friends with. Dude, we're going on like three, four years now. Yeah, it's been and a I, and I And I love him, and he makes me nervous, and I want to do a good job um, hosting uh, my friend Brandon Allen. Hey. Hey, what the, uh, <laughs> hey, you know, uh, this is, this is, you know, this is, um, we need to get a new guest chair. I feel bad. It's kind of funny, but I'm sitting taller than Brandon right now. And Brent, how tall are you? Six, one, six, one. Yeah. I'm five, six. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, and I got to step here. Yeah. Deep the mic. Yeah. I know that you, your chair keeps falling backwards and he's got to lean into the microphone and <laughs> I think it's I'm funny. sorry. It's not, we, we're not treating you this poorly on purpose. Yeah, I heard but, the other um, guest got a better chair. That's yeah, all right. No. Well, it used to be the casting <laughs> couch. couch. It used to be like the porn couch. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was a casting couch. And um, but we're but we're upgrading the podcast studio here, piece by piece. Um, yeah, looking good. Yeah. Anyways, it is a lot of books. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of books. A lot of a lot of war trophies and books and and things like that. But it's uh, so these shows come out on Saturday. But it is as of recorded. Today's a Monday, ten forty six a.m. Yep. Um, cheers, How's Brandon. Up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. It's my deload week, and Brandon's here. We're drinking on today's show. Not Owen. Owen's got a glass of water. No caffeine. Yeah, no caffeine. Just water for Owen. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cruise through uh, four beers, and then Brandon, dude, you've been really fucking crushing the claws lately. Oh, dude, claws and, up. and you're kind of a, a late adopter to the claw life, right? Just jumped on board. Yeah. Right? Welcome to the fucking right. team, man. Right. Yeah. Usually, you know, I gotta show everyone how how small my dick is. Yeah. Drink whiskey only. And, yeah. And all that, and you know, and dad beers are my yeah. go-to. But you kept posting claws, and dude. I was like, dude, I got to try one of these fucking things. They are refreshing. And then after like nine, you're like, hey, it's working. Right. It's working. You got, I mean, yeah, you got to. And the hangover gotta, is very minimal. Yeah, it's just it's chill. Spiked yeah. water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there a lot of sugar in them? No, dude. I don't think so. Hard calories. Yeah. Because I like sweet drinks, Two like uh, like wine. I like, used to drink wine, and the, and the white wines have a lot of sugar in them. Two grams of sugar. Two. The, um, have you ever, have you never had a claw? I've never had one. Oh, Damn, simple. dude, and I can't. I'm not. So I'm. I'm strictly loyal to the White Claw, and I. I don't like my friends who drink Trulies or things like that. It's dirty to me. It'd be like Shitty. you know. It'd be like me hiring a different powerlifting coach. That That's what weird. that is. But but Line and Kugel <laughs> is starting to come out with uh, seltzer flavored beers. Everyone so does it's like now. yeah, but, Corona, but but I like yeah, Budweiser. But, yeah, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't do like the Bud Light seltzer, but li- Lineys, man, I like Lineys. Lining Line, Line and Kugel. You ever had a uh, summer no. shandy? Never. Had oh yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you, you. yeah. Summer yeah. shandies, man. It's getting hot. Yeah. It is summer shandy time. It is uh, juicy watermelon Formula One protein time and summer shandy time. It's just that's <laughs> the the heat's coming. That's it. Mm-hmm. I so the first time I started dabbing in claws. Well, I, we had a pack of Trulies. I remember I told you about them. You're like, no, nah, man, claws only. I was, uh, like, just, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, get it. And then uh, we uh, rented uh, pedal assist electric bikes. Which, if you haven't done that, it's one of the coolest fucking things ever. Pedal assist electric bike. That means, like, you can pedal. You pedal. And it generates power, and then you just sort of cruise for a while. So you can adjust the the assist by, like, one, two, or three, or zero. Uh, So, like, on three would give you maximum assistance. One would be minimal. So you can, like, monitor how much battery you use. You know what I mean? Anyways, it makes it's fucking dope, dude. So I buy tall cans of White Claws because, you know, we're going on a long ride. We covered almost 40 miles, me and my wife. We're not in shape. In Nevada here? Or? Yeah, oh, really? over okay, Lake wow. Mead. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. So we covered 40 miles, and like I said, we're not in shape. And I'm fucking no shirt on, one hand going up a hill in like six gear on level three pedal assist, driving by guys that are like on like $10,000 road bikes, just getting sucking. everything they got. I'm fucking, claws up, boys! Claws up, boys! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Blowing by them. It was so <laughs> rad. I was like, dude, these are the coolest fucking things ever, man. Yeah. I and mean, you're still working. You're yeah. st- I mean, I was covered in sweat. You know, you're still working. That's cool. I want to ride a bike. Dude, I, I, I haven't ridden a bike in 
uh, since 2006. Why? So that's 14 years. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, like that's I I I, can't, I tec- the the technically I can. It's just you got to get the special leg parts and things like that. But at this point, it's not even about. I had a I had a dream one time that I was riding a bike and yeah. I couldn't because I've so out of practice, like the balancing, you know. And it's also like, how do I start? I don't know. I, I'd like to ride a bike again someday, but it'll take some thinking mm. because it's like I have dreams like I that, like to, you can't fight or you can't run. Yeah, you think like yeah, I gotta like, go test my shit. running skills real quick. I don't quick. know. Yeah, I could, I could push you. I, I want to ride a bike. You. That's you know, it's pretty you know, it's my my lifting days are they're numbered. Maybe possibly. I like I, you know, I, I'd I'd like to get into triathlons, but the bike thing will be a funny like. How do I even start? Because if my leg is clipped in, I just get on a static bike and I'm not moving. So or maybe I have to like hop start my bike. You know, you're, over, <laughs> like, you're overthinking it. Yeah, you're overthinking yeah. It. So we'll see. His three year old son rides a bike. Yeah, no, sh- true. Yeah, yeah, a mountain uh, bike maybe, too. Hey, Full can, size mountain. Can bike. Seamus give me lessons? Or, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, you'll you'll it, mm-hmm. uh, much easier than you're than you're uh, making it out to be. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I guess it'd be because, like, when you I used to race BMX when I was a kid, you know, and I did that before I got into football. So um, you would, you were probably like a strong kid, weren't you? Like, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I was, was. I mean, I, I benched two hundred pounds when I was like twelve years yeah, old. See, you know, I, 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 I skateboarded kid. and did inline skating, and I got a BMX bike, but I was so weak. I Probably. couldn't do a wheelie. All like right. I couldn't even lift myself. We, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we rode motocross and BMX yeah. and everything. Uh, so then when, uh, so as I got older, once I got to high school, like my dad, when I was real stern about, you know, if you're going to do something, you need to dedicate yourself to it and stick it out and do it. And I wanted to play football and you can't play football and then go tra- ride BMX and then not train, not be there for your team because you uh, broke your arm or something. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So high school is when I stopped riding bikes. Uh-huh. But, um, yeah, you used to clip yeah. your pedal, you clip your feet in and shit, and yeah. you control that bike when you're clipped in. Yeah, I don't, I don't, couldn't imagine I would be with your leg. But you BMX with clipped in? Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Okay. And yeah, when you race, all those guys around the shit that makes sense. I went riding fucking three pound bikes and shit. Oh yeah, that Probably. makes sense. Yeah, we have a little pump track next to my house. Just and, by Floyd Lamb. Uh, Henderson. Oh, oh, the Henderson. Okay, that yeah. one's been there. Yeah, and it's super cool because all the all the kids who race come hang out. And, right bomb around that track and you're like whoa you're fast dude they didn't have pump tracks when i was no they didn't when I, yeah it didn't exist we just had to build tr- jumps in a dirt field before we got shut down for right built the new get building. arrested for trespassing yeah, in la there was nowhere to <laughs> ride like that and yeah, no but uh dude they just built a pump track at uh floyd lamb yeah up over by your north. place it's awesome well, no up here up north at the old my old place yeah by my old place got it so let's check it out yeah, floyd lamb they got like i think three pump tracks nice right. my boys will love it we have a badass bmx track in boulder city seen it yeah that thing's dope i think since since we're talking about pump tracks should we should we share the savage slapper we should i was thinking about music when you say yeah i got dude i got a um so do you listen to the podcast here at all or yeah. uh so we do the savage slapper of the week and um and i, and I had a i had a slapper ready to go but i found a slappier slapper this morning last minute it change fucked, yeah it was fuck yeah Ooh. i was like i was like this is slappy um you know i love spotify do you use spotify no you use pandora don't do. you yeah, yeah dude, I, I fucking love spotify because they'll suggest music to you same with pandora um but i like spotify <laughs> <laughs> and spotify is black and green and pandora is blue and white so that's, that's no, right. <laughs> yeah that's but but um the, the 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 savage slapper of the week um is a song called outsider by a band named Vale of Maya. Do you have you heard Vale of Maya I'm at not. all? Dude, they're fucking good. So I've I've listened to uh, Vale of Maya for like ten years now. Actually, um, uh, the, my favorite song of theirs is is a song called "The Glass Slide," and if it's off their album Eclipse, um, it's a fucking it's it's so that's like maybe a sub slapper the glass okay. slide but the real slapper is their this the song Outsider Vale of Maya. It just came out recently, so maybe they're putting out a new. Um, album soon or something, but it is just fucking. I, I I listened to it for the first time while I was taking my pre-workout poop, uh-huh. and then I, I probably listened to it on repeat like six times during my workout. Today. Nice, it's a good. Sped up that it's poop. A, it's a good sappy, uh, slappy slapper. Yeah, sped up the poop. The poop was so good, I had to keep going. <laughs> Let's fucking go. So that's our savage slapper of the week, Outsider by Val of Maya. What's your? What do you have a favorite song that you go to for a lift? You know it, what it is. Yeah, well, well they don't know. What, right. What's your what's King your, 810. Yeah. Fat around the heart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah when, if that doesn't get your heart going, I don't know. You know, Hate Breed's got a couple bangers that, you know, no matter what, when I hear them, they're going to do it. I've never been into Hate Breed. It's just one of those bands I didn't get into. But, you know, it's like. There's, it's new metal. You would dig it. Yeah. Because I know you yeah, like. Yeah, you can't listen to everything. But right. fuck, yeah. 
Mm. Throwdown is by far my go-to for like a whole album, like Throwdown yeah. Haymaker that yeah. album. I think it was like from 2003. Yeah. Every fucking song on that album slaps. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. Yeah, um, and actually, I was just thinking about it. You're the reason I started actually listening to the Ghost Inside, right. and so they were our slapper. Oh yeah, last a week? week ago or so. Yeah, week yeah. Ago. and 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 I and I was saying I I knew of the band, but I didn't I didn't listen to them. I didn't like them because I didn't really give them a fair shot. You yeah. Know? But when you were lifting uh, years ago, um, a big song in in Filthy was. Uh, their POD cover of Southtown. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, who the, who, who, who the fuck is this? And I was like, what? The ghost inside? This is them. Right. So I started listening to their shit. I was like, this is fucking good, right. man. Yeah. So uh, 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 you're the reason I started listening to Ghost Inside. So thank nice. you. Nice. And uh, yeah, do you, uh, do you know they got a new album coming out? No, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm real bad at keeping up with. Sure. Yeah. Well, they haven't. They just, haven't. One day I'm like, well, oh, dude, like, they haven't put out new music in four years because right. they got in that bus accident. So. Yeah. See, I didn't know anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. They're fucking. Two of them live here in Vegas. No shit. Yeah. The fucking. Uh, the lead singer lives uh, up north here. Oh. He's just he, when he's not playing music, he's, your he, he's playing. Yeah, he really is, but he doesn't want to hang out with me. I saw him at LVAC one time. <laughs> you know, I was like, damn, you know, like nobody knew who he fucking was, and I just went right over there. I was like, yo, man, <laughs> let me fucking let me get a sip of your sweat, dog. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me fanboy yeah, for a second. Let me put those weights back for yeah, you. Yeah, the bass. Let <laughs> leave it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got it. I'll, uh, I'll, get, I'll take it back for you. Yeah, and that's actually that's I, I was you know I wanted to um that's where I met you. LBAC. Yeah, LBAC. That was, but this is, this is, I love this story because it was like, I think it must've been 2016, yeah. late 2016 or early 2017. So I'm in, um, LVAC. That's the, uh, commercial. Yep. Bro Hold spot. <clears throat> there we go. That's the, that's the bro gym here. LVAC Las Vegas athletic club. I call it LVAC. Yep. Um, and that's, and it is like your pure bro gym bro gym like the cuntiest cunt people there but they they have great equipment the gym itself is yeah, phenomenal the, and, and i'm and it's i'm willing to put up with the people i mean this is the gym where the guys are wearing like fucking lightning bolt fucking leggings and things like that oh. yeah so it's it's that gym you know? atomics boots uh for cardio on the stair machine guys right. that are running fucking <laughs> yeah. five thousand grams of steroids a week just to bench press 225 yeah really yeah, <laughs> really, yeah. halfway down halfway right, up right, yeah. yeah squat three mm -hmm. plates you know what i mean quarter rep so it's screen. that gym so i i stand out there and at the time, I think I had like a, a fucking queer Viking haircut type thing and a long beard. And then so it's just it's just people like that. And then um, I see this guy and this girl come in the gym and I'm like, who the fuck is this? You have a very commanding presence. If you guys if you guys um, aren't watching the video, you've never seen Brandon before. Uh, you're six one at the time. You were probably like 320, 340, 340, uh, 340 pound power lifter. Jeez. Fucking always tan. Yeah. Always in the proper. He's got a length. nice strong you're, you're, base. You wear the proper length shorts. <laughs> They're about mid thigh. Yep. You know? yep. He's got a five inch own, inseam. His yep. own cut up fucking tanks. Five by five, baby. He, he takes t-shirts and cuts <laughs> tanks, backwards hat, long beard, long hair. And so he's just, and you're just walking around the gym. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? And I was sitting there doing my sit-ups because I was skinny and, and, and fucking <laughs> wanted to look good. You know? you're, you're and, and, and you just like came upstairs and you, you know, you walked away. And then maybe like 10, 15 minutes later, you came over and you're like, Are you Derek? Are you Derek Weeda? Right, Weeda. Like, <laughs> you <laughs> Derek Weeda? I was like, I was like, well, I'm Derek. What? You know, to this like, day, I, like, I call you Derek Weeda. Yeah, I know, out yeah. of principle now. Yep. It's, it's no, I, that's Weeda. where I started. <laughs> yeah. I'm sticking to it. Yep. No, it was it was but I felt so cool. I was like, this fucking guy knows me. Coolest guy in the fucking gym right now. <laughs> <laughs> comes over and asks me if I'm me. And right? I'm like, yeah, I am. <laughs> you want to talk? <laughs> I'm like, do you know who I am? He's like, no. I was like, oh, oh. No. yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but I did then, and, and you gave me your business card there. Um, and that's kind of what you did. Yeah. yeah that's, so that's really the only reason you ever went to LV. Yeah. yeah. A little backstory on that. So, like, uh, I own a Filthy Power Gym out here in Vegas. We have two locations now. But, uh, you know, I've been out here for seven or eight years now. And I used to train all the way on the other side of town at an MMA gym uh, called uh, Syndicate MMA. And I just, the owners were friends of mine. So they had a little powerlifting section that they let me lift at and slam weights and, you know, squat out of the, with the squat bar and all that. And um, anyways, we created Filthy Power out of necessity. So we just built this really small 1200 square foot gym that me and my wife would train at because we would go to LVAC and I'd bend the bar squatting. They tell me I can't squat there or slam weights. And I mean, I'm deadlifting 800 fucking pounds. Yeah, and, and they have gonna, the shitty right. hex plates hex there. Plates, I fucking yeah. hate deadlifting. So, 
<laughs> and we got kicked out of all the gold gyms. In Vegas. Yeah. We weren't allowed. They wouldn't even let us in the yeah. house. Every so. gym is a Planet Fitness if you're Brandon Allen. You <laughs> Pretty know, much. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. But yeah, because we would roll in deep, chalk everywhere. You know, we're assholes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so LVAC is where we had to start training at. Anyways, we're dealing with so many problems in there. Not able to have your gym bag on the floor. And, yeah. you know, powerlifters, we got a ton of shit. Yeah. So I was like, all right, this sucks. So we created our own little gym. And I've been, we've had Filthy for six years now. I, I just, I couldn't imagine any other way. Like, uh, I couldn't imagine doing real training at a commercial gym anymore. Yeah. I just, you know, just with the intensity and all that, you just couldn't match it. But uh, we would go to LVAC just to recruit members yeah. for our gym. <laughs> so we would literally, like, I I'd go to the gym once a month maybe. Like, no, it wasn't even that often. Once every other month. Every fucking, yeah, biannually. Right, right. Yeah, yeah that's, quarterly, that's as every much quarter. as you could take. Yeah, maybe quarterly, quarterly visit. Right. Like, you started out every month, like, I can't take the people. Right, And then it's right. just like, you're like, all right, quarterly, quarterly, right. yeah, biannually. And mind uh, you, at this time, I was very strong and growing and powerlifting. And, you know, mm -hmm. in, uh, Instagram uh, was, you know, big for me back then. And so I had, uh, you know, I'd go to these gyms and I'm sure you, you obviously know exactly what I'm talking about and you can't really get a workout in or you can, but you have to be a dick. Mm -hmm. And when you have sh such short public interactions with people, if you're a dick, that's all they're going to remember you as. And that's what I'm going to tell everyone that this guy is a fucking dick. Cause I was yeah. bothering him in the middle of the squat set, sure. you know? So we would only go in there just to find strong guys yeah, and, or, you know, or strong girls, whatever. Mm -hmm. And someone dead or good looking ones doing sit-ups or some handsome fellers. <laughs> hey, do you want a different place to do your uh, crunches there? <laughs> <laughs> we got soft mats. Yeah. We're going to rig something up for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, we literally walk through to do, you know, our typical little recruit sesh. And then right when we walk up and I saw you and then we walk away, I was like, damn, I was like, that's Derek Wieda. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Derek Wieda. <laughs> and then Jenny is like, who's Derek Wieda? I'm like, Derek. I was like, no, no, no. So I showed you and she's like, oh, okay, awesome. And she's like, okay, well, you need to go talk to him. And like, I'm the, I'm the biggest pussy when like going, I just don't like being that guy. Like, yeah. I, I'd love to talk to you, but I, I don't like yeah. initiating. No, it's the, you got to go ask him the to classic, dance. The classic, <laughs> it's the classic lover's tale when mm -hmm. both guys are afraid to she's talk scared. to each other. Me and Dennis Wolf did that for years. <laughs> yeah. We never talked to each other. Finally, we did, and we became good friends. We're like, oh, I should have done this he, five years ago. Is he the big German that trains up there? That's yep. that, Yeah, okay, yeah. See, I... Uh, I, I've seen him like three times and I never had the balls to say hi. Oh, really? You know who I did have the balls to say hi to? So it was a long time ago, fucking like 2005. I was still in the army, but I was at home on leave and I went to the gym, um, the Gold's gym up there that I was working out at. And um, from that area, Sean William Scott, you know, Stifler from America oh, yeah. High. Okay. He was, he was, he's from Cottage Grove, Minnesota. Um, or I believe, I think he went to the high school there, but anyways, he's from up in that. And so he was working out. It, Scott, Sean William Scott was working out right by me and it was weird. <laughs> I did a couple sets and he's, he's just minding his own business. And I didn't know what to say. Finally, I was like, Hey man, not going to pretend like I don't know who you are. Cause that's, <laughs> that's more awkward than this. Right. I, was like, I was like, I'm Derek. He's like, I'm Sean. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Sean. <laughs> yeah. You don't say Spit in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, no, it's <laughs> yeah. oh, no, it's weird, but it's, fu you know, it's, um, you know, people will come up to you at the gym and they're like, sorry that I'm awkward, but we have right. those moments with all people the time. that we like too, you know, yeah, all you know, the time. I actually, uh, I was talking about the concert I went to. Yep. And how I got weird with Ronnie Radke and mm -hmm. Tim Lambesis and stuff. Yeah, it's weird. It's kind of, yeah. But um, I'm glad you did yeah. say hi because that was cool. And yeah. Yeah. So Jenny told me I had to go say hi. I had to go talk to him. And I was like, oh, fuck. What am I going to say? Hey, you want to go uh, CrossFit? <laughs> How's your yeah. leg? Yeah. <laughs> I, know, you know, like, yeah. I know I'm going to say something stupid. Like, yeah. I, I know we just went up and introduced and you're cool as fuck. And yeah. I think uh, you came to the gym a little bit after that, and then mm -hmm. you just kind of randomly pop in and do your LVAC thing, and then yeah, and then it wasn't too long after that where you decided you wanted to take it yeah, that's the the, the the timing was right. right. Yeah, about about a year and a half after we met, I went full powerlifting mode there, and um um maybe we'll talk about that today. But I want to talk about I want to talk about people know about me. I want to talk about you. Cool. And but maybe we we'll can maybe we will talk about a little bit of my short term powerlifting career. We I didn't accomplish the things I wanted to accomplish, but I had twins in the middle. It was, hey. was kind of weird. Yeah. But um, you know, I think um, uh, so that's that's how Brandon and I met, and so we've been good friends now. What's that's about three and a half years ago. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. that was like probably mid twenty sixteen. I think summer yeah. twenty sixteen mm -hmm. we met. So, yeah. That was that was right when I moved here. Yeah. Oh, you had like you were several weeks. Into being here. Really? Yeah, okay, when I yeah, met that you, I'm sense. pretty sure yeah. you were like, I think, you, I'm positive that you said you Yeah, moved. that makes sense. Yeah, I moved here like July 4th weekend. It was actually, I was only supposed to be visiting Stacy because I, I was living in El, El Paso, but um, Stacy took a job out here and I was only supposed to visit, but 
I didn't want to um, go back to El Paso because, right. you know, I was like, what? But I can work from anywhere. And I just stayed out here. It's good living out here in Vegas. It is. It's <laughs> different. But you're not from here. No. You're from Los Angeles. No, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, yeah. LA, LA. How did LA produce you? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, I listened to country music. I was yeah, no redneck sh- yeah. as they come. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, no, I grew up in LA in like South Bay of LA, like Torrance and Lomita area. So more of the beach, beach, you know, grew up surfing, things like that. Uh, played football and, you know, all that noise. You know, it was always into strength and training. So you were just kind of always, were you always just a big kid no. growing up growing up no i was okay so when i was really young i was a really big kid and then like I, there was just the gap there like mind you i have an, an 18 month older brother and a year old older cousin and the three of us were kind of raised like brothers so we did everything together and i was the young one and i got my ass whipped by them on everything and playing sports anything with i always had to play up to be with them you know so yeah it's just i i was smaller for them for in the, in the aspects of that and then when we got to high school my fucking little nuts finally dropped that's where everything changed. Yeah. Like my freshman year of high school, I think I was five nine, a buck sixty five. My sophomore year, six one two twenty. Fucking a. Jeez, that's, that's a like, spurt right I, there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. bust the yeah. nuts all day. Jesus Christ! Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that. How is your dad a big guy? Or I've met your dad. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, yeah. he's six foot, mm-hmm. uh, about the same weight as me. Is he? Yeah, two eighty. Two eighty. Yeah. My, yeah, people that know me are like, 280, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, yeah. I, am, I am now down to 280 pounds. Yeah, you, this is the smallest I've ever seen you. This is the right? lightest I've been in over 10 years. You're petite, yeah. almost. Petite. Yeah. Petite. 280 and, pounds and, petite. And, and, and we'll get into why. It's probably not so much by choice. But, um, yeah, so um, so so fo- uh, I played football through high school. Played ball, uh, surfed, BMX, all kind of extreme sports, snowboarding, all that kind of fun stuff. But what? To, but it sounds like you said your dad was like really strict with you and, and kind of made you choose. What was that like? What was it like uh, having a, a a father figure that taught you right? pr- principles <laughs> like engaged following through? Father. Like, what well, is that? Before yeah, you give him too much right. credit, yeah, yeah, this right, went yeah. on until I was 15. Okay, So yeah. my parents divorced at 15, okay. and then that's where – you know, I got, I started getting in trouble and yeah. becoming a knucklehead and things yeah. like that. 15 is a really weird age to go from yeah. like a military style structured household yeah. to whatever the fuck you want to do. Right. There's how, no how rules. Is, right. How was, how was that split up? Like the custody, were you with your mom? Were you with your dad or was it bro- mainly with bro- my dad, yeah. but back and forth. My dad's yeah. always gone for work and shit. My brother and sister stayed with my mom. So was, I was, there, kinda, was there any kind of consistency? Like, did you know the no. plan? No, yeah, fuck, fuck no. Dude, fuck. Yeah, that's fuck no. That's, I, I, and that's again, just, I was yeah. a, I was a real knucklehead when I was younger. Mm-hmm. So I didn't care to be in a space. I was always getting in trouble. I think you say that as if we're not knuckleheads now, but right. okay. Right, right. No, <laughs> yeah. but now Those we're not words, yeah. we're not getting in trouble and going to jail, yeah, are we? It's like, yeah, right. like, yeah. Now you understand consequences. Right. Back now then you're like, right. fuck the world. Yeah, fuck I'm everyone. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was my that was, you know, my younger years. And then as I got older, you know, I you know grew up and then uh, I went to school. I went to a junior college in Orange County and played football. Um, did really well at the junior college. What position did you play in football? Fullback. Oh, dude, that's sick. That's sick. I got a good friend, uh, 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 Danny, who plays. Uh, he he just got signed with the Patriots. He's a fullback. Oh, really? But he was. I'm he, good he, friends he, with Heath Evans, who used to play for the Patriots. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was the fullback. Was, oh, really? So yeah. yeah uh, um, uh, Danny just he was he, he played for the Packers. But he made a like a Trump hat, like make fullbacks great again, dude. Oh, like, nice. He'd be a sick fullback. Yeah. Like if you looked like you, but you played in the NFL right now, right. I'd be like, fuck yeah. Well, the, like, uh, I mean, not to say that, oh, I would have usually been in the NFL. Sure, those yeah. Times. But, like, times have changed in the NFL, in yeah. term, especially when I was coming up. Like, they, they, no one runs a power eye anymore. No, yeah. That's mm-hmm. a good college, yeah. you know, running team. But in, in the pros, if you're a running back, you're a receiver. Yeah. So Especially I, that, now, the way right, things are. Right, yeah. that, and that mm-hmm. definitely wasn't me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I probably would have had a better chance at playing, like, a nose guard or something <laughs> like that if I had, was as big as I am now. Yeah. But again, still. You Who know. was that like legendary fullback? That Michael Stott. Yeah, number yeah, dude. 40. Was that, was that your dog? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was my number. Yeah, yep. everybody. Dude, I, I fucking, I played, dude, I was, I played football one season growing up and I'm, I'm like, maybe this was like sixth or seventh grade or no, seventh or eighth grade or something like that. You know, and I, I did like the, the offensive line slash tight end thing. I think I was awful at it. I did not have, I do not have, so like for, for, but for me and. So that was just high school though. You only tried it in high school? Before high school. Okay. Like junior so high. So it was like seventh or eighth grade. But so like uh, two things. I, I was also playing soccer or soccer was like my main squeeze. And yep. soccer was the longest sport that I played growing up, you yep. know? Um, but I, I, I played every sport once. Um, you know, and I, I, I played football. I did. I'm not a football player. I don't have that fast twitch muscle or especially at the time I had no 
understanding of I didn't have an aggressive personality because like if football is like hey um, you go from stop to go like that and, and if reactions. you can't right. and if you can't go from stop to go 100 percent like you're, you're not a football player right. and I didn't have that I'm just like hey guys let's stop and think about it right. you know <laughs> but, <laughs> when, when we were kids my dad made us all play every sport as well like yeah. at the park you know the rec leagues yeah. I mean from volleyball to soccer to baseball mm -hmm. we had to play everything and then when we got to high school, we can choose. And I, I well, once you chose, you had to fucking. Football. Once you chose, you had to stick to it. That was a. Well, I could play any sports I want, but yeah. if I didn't want to have to work through high school, I had to be playing a sport. Oh, really? Yeah. Right? So okay. we always played a sport because yeah. working, we weren't going to fucking work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we wanted to chase pussy and, yeah. you know, we smoke weed and yeah. do that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. My old man made me play. Or it wasn't like a. We can't, we wanted to. But yeah, yeah, we had played all the sports and everything. And then high school, I just dialed it in on just football. Yeah. But yeah, but what you say, like, some of the most fit people and most in shape people in the world can't play a sport because it's a different, it's, it's totally different. It's like reactionary yeah. and mm -hmm. it's uh, it's just a different thing. Like you look at the world's strongest or the, wor the world's most fittest man in CrossFit. Like those guys are in the most, such superb shape. They should be able to play any professional sport physically. Yeah. But not but, upstairs. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I did not have a, uh, a football mentality growing up, but I mean like the army taught me how to, or like uh, football is a fucking man's sport. Like if you're not in like football, if you're not out to fucking hurt the guy across you're from you, hurt, like, right. yeah. Yep. So I didn't have that. I didn't have, I didn't have a, I had a different upbringing. I, I didn't have, uh, I had a lot of feelings, but I didn't have, I didn't, I didn't have that aggression, you know, but right. the army taught me that like, we're good now. Right. right. We're good now, right. but, um, I can't play football. Well, you weren't getting your ass kicked by your older brother and cousin. Your right. Life. So that, yeah, that's another thing. I just had, I just had a sister who, um, um, made me watch musicals and stuff. I didn't, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why like Jack and Max, the boys here, they fucking got brothers, you know, it's like right. endless competition. Oh yeah. They're going to be tough. Cool, yeah. A very cool dynamic, um, that, that I didn't have. And I actually do have an older brother, but. That's a story in itself, and he's not a part of uh, anything. But yeah, you uh, never yeah. talk about him. No, I, I. But like, that's a, that's a cool dynamic having having sibling brothers and things like that. That'll fucking make them. I like, didn't realize how lucky I was though. Yeah. Because like, I I really was lucky because yeah. I was literally like when I say getting mad. Like we used to we used mm -hmm. to fight. We used to do karate. Mm -hmm. I mean, MMA didn't exist back then, other yeah. than in the UFC, which like yeah. we're talking about UFC one and two. Other three, than four, in your backyard time. when right. you took your brother's toy. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 So the, yeah, we used to train karate and all that kind of. shit. Shit, and we would whoop the shit out of each other yeah. and then we would fight so hard at home you know like uh, my dad would always tell us like if anyone gives you shit at school if you guys fight like that you're gonna be okay yeah and um we learned that real quick and yeah. obviously i was a pissed off kid and i like to whoop ass so yeah. that was a problem yeah but, but uh, the, dude there's been so the way I, the way i was raised is like dude like, and i think this had like negative consequences with me growing up is like i wasn't even allowed to defend myself like any any kind of oh yeah because uh, your any, sister and right. well like but at school if somebody picked oh. on me if i if i got if i got in trouble or if i got in a fight at school i would get disciplined at home no matter whether i was on the right or wrong side and there there is being on the right side of a fight. Like if you're, yeah. if you're just sitting there minding your own business and somebody's fucking with you and you fucking stand up for yourself, right. you gotta, you gotta teach a kid to stand up for themselves. Totally. I, nobody, no, it wasn't, I wasn't allowed to stand up for, to, for myself. I will not raise my boys that way. No. In fact, if, if, if like, if Max is getting picked on and, and he gets in a fight and he gets beat up and Jack wasn't there, I'm going to punish, I'm going to punish the shit out of Jack. I'm like, why the fuck weren't you there? You guys got the numbers, right? You know, right. there is no, like a fair fight is a stupid fight. Right. Yep. Okay. You guys have the numbers. <laughs> okay. So our, our so. rule in our house is like, <laughs> if one of us came home with our ass whooped, and the other one didn't get his ass whooped too, then he was yeah. going to get his ass no, whooped like, when he got yeah. home. You better both so no matter back. what, you better, you better fucking do it. Yeah, yeah, you better do what if it, it takes. If it, yeah, if it's if it's max on five, it's it's two on five. Right. And if you lose, like, I'm cool. Right. Dude, I'm fucking, one on one yeah. is one on one until <laughs> yeah. it doesn't go so good. Then it's two on one. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny, like, growing up, you're like, oh, it's, it's uh, you know, people are like, unfair fight, blah, blah, blah. And, like, that was, like, sort of, like, disrespected. Are we in a ring? Are we in a ring? This isn't a sport. We're in a ring. We're fighting. And then in the army, they're like, if you don't have the numbers, Yep. Don't even go to that fight, you know. Right, right. Oh shit! So it's got to be. It's got like four to one odds or something like yep. that to go into that battle. So I was like, oh yeah, Jack and Max, you fucking you always team up on a girl, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Her way. I was like, we're talking about fighting, yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, who knows? Maybe they'll get into. Hey, shit some like of my that, good yeah. friends that are twins that you're up with. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. I heard. Uh, yeah. The, uh, yeah. There's gonna be a lucky girl that's gonna get a white sandwich. Yeah. No shit. Well, <laughs> you know, Cody had twin girls. Yeah. Dude, you know, dude. So, oh. So here's a here's a funny story. So um, I had uh, Stacy and I had Jack and Max January 10th, 2019. Okay. 
we got a good friend from the gym, Cody, one of Brandon's um, training clients, and we did the same uh, meet together. Super fucking nice dude. Um, him and his wife, um, they had twin. So we had twin boys, January 10th, 2019. They had t twin girls, January 10th. 2020 same guy oh, wow. what the fuck man same hospital uh similar delivery personnel and things like right. that but it's kind of nice like i'm just p passing off all my shit to him right right i was like cody yeah. you can have it for free but i don't deliver right, you know right, like, right. Get it you out gotta come house. pick it yeah. up yeah. Mm -hmm. and and you gotta need, take both of them and if you need something down in the house he's a great guy mm -hmm. to have over that's why he didn't Handy come as get, fuck. That's, he was supposed <laughs> to get the jumpers last weekend but apparently he was painting all yep. your shit yep. yeah i made him get my house <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well I, I did it nicely i started off with yeah because like we had some holes oh. and i we ran some electrical for some uh fans yeah. and like you know I, I textured it and painted it and it just looked terrible like i don't i don't do texture and drywall so i was like could i need you to come over and texture and drywall a couple holes he's like yeah no problem i was like and, and paint that with paint. The yeah, place, you know, I know. Like, so what? what, 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 what <laughs> <laughs> he was, Don't worry, I'll help you prep. <laughs> he was he was supposed to come get the the boys his old jumpers here, and he said, I I you know went to Brandon's. It was supposed to be a quick job, but it turned into. Uh, whole a, a whole day. I was like, "Hey, that sounds about right, man. Like, yep. that's what I would do." Right. So it's like, "We're good. It's all good." We got yeah. a buddy Doughboy. It's a, his work buddy that I coach his buddy as well, and yeah, I had him both over fucking yeah. busting ass, yeah. getting it done. I know, hey, I, but. I, Kicked him some money, got him drunk, and got yeah, him wild. I eh? Yeah, I think about things I want to do in the house here. I'm like, man, I should just call Cody and have him paint. But um, getting back on topic here. So like, okay, so so you're fucking you. Football. That's where we're at. I was playing college, junior college football. When did it go to lift? You're you're big in the powerlifting world. You're you're fucking. You've you've solidified yourself in the power. When did you start? When did when did that happen? When when did when did you turn to lifting as so a? When I got done with football, when I got done with school. Mind you, I, I was gonna go play. You know, at a Division One school, Arizona. I was talking to, and uh, I had a hernia that I had to have uh, repaired. That they were gonna make me get repaired, and I'd have the medical red shirt. I was like, I'm not going to fucking school to go to school. I was only going to play football. So uh, at that point, like, what, what am I gonna do? Just roll the dice and hope to go to the NFL. It just wasn't realistic, you know. So uh, I had to go to get to work. And I started, uh, my, my old man is trucking. So naturally, that's what I got into. And uh, bought a truck and used to run routes as an owner operator. And, um, you know, I did great, loved it. And so I was just working and making good money and everything like that, but still training, like I, as if I were fucking playing ball. Like, was it uh, was it a dream of yours to go to the NFL? Yeah. Then, or, every, or really? I think every yeah. kid is, you know, every, or every kid that plays football. Yeah, definitely. When you're, when you're five, six your whole life, it is not your dream to go to professional sports. <laughs> it's not on there. <laughs> right. no. I guess every kid that plays football. pretty good at squash, you know. Like. <laughs> table tennis? Yeah, no shit. Yeah. 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 yeah, no, so of course, like, that's the dream, right? Because that's what you, you don't know any better. You're a mm -hmm. dumbass kid. You just think like, oh, that's the pinnacle. That's where I need to be. You don't even know about learning a trade or working or anything like sure. that. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, so I was I was working, and mind you, I was working crazy hours. You know what I mean, eighty, ninety hour work work weeks, and but still training no matter what, and always strong. And um, I got into doing overhead power line construction and, and as equipment operator, and uh, I would work you know twelve, sixteen hour days. I'm not exaggerating, you know, six, seven days a week, and we would work these crazy jobs, but we we're making stupid money. But again, I was always still training. I would like. I just, I just knew like this, this isn't for me. Like, you know, getting up at four in the morning, I guess I get up at two 30 in the morning now, right? But yeah, getting up at four in the morning to go work for someone else all day, make them a ton of money to come home, be exhausted, barely get a good workout in, go to sleep. What am I fucking doing, man? Yeah. I don't want it. I don't want mm -hmm. this. Yeah. So, you know, saved money, um, did well, you know, with working and I, I shut, I turn on the lights and then turn off the lights on a job. It was first one on last one hired or fired off and I uh, was doing pretty good financially. Uh, had a, real shitty girlfriend at the time, real shitty girlfriend. And uh, we were just toxic as hell. And I just, I knew I wanted to move to Vegas. So I moved to Vegas and brought her with me out here. And the reason why is because I used to talk to Eric Spoto and Stan Efferding on Facebook and stuff. And um, I was just, you know, I, I wanted to come out here to train with Eric. Eric is the, was the former world record bench presser, 722 pounds raw. He lives out here in Vegas. Hold on, seven hundred. Does Jeez. that mean like no fucking bench shirt? Right, raw. Seven twenty-two. Correct. What? That's insane. What? Yeah. Like no protective raw. raw. So just like the fucking wrist wraps. Like yep. we. 
Is that so? Is that is that still the world record? No. Ugh. What what is the world record now? So it's been broken by two different people and by one guy three times. So the current world record is seven sixty five by Julius Maddox, and he is going to bench eight hundred pounds raw in, in like in June. He has an event coming up in June. How much does he weigh? How big? Four hundred forty pounds. He's a fucking monster. It's insane. Six four four forty. He's a fucking moose. That's insane. That's insane. That's yeah, insane. yeah. <laughs> we actually just interviewed Eric because Eric doesn't like doing interviews, and you know, and we just interviewed him on the broadcast and talked about you know all these new freaks coming up and everything. Yeah. And he's just like, "Fuck, I don't even know anymore." <laughs> everything, everything just gets better and better. Yeah. yeah well, and then crazy. and then mass, mass is everything. So when you yeah. have someone that's that big and then interested in the sp- in the sport yeah. of powerlifting or bench only, you know, mm-hmm. he's only yeah, you know, he's got genetic potential and no gas. He like no steroids. Throughout his whole career. Oh, shit. So he's, you know, he's a younger, he's not too old. He's a younger guy, huge black dude, sick genetics, just started taking testosterone. Is he in the Air Force or something like that? Or, or is this a different, no. I, I, I was, okay, I sorry. truly sorry. doubt yeah. that. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't want to speak for him. I heard about some fucking Air Force guy not too long ago benching a fucking stupid. But anyways, okay, right. yeah. So I moved to Vegas because mm-hmm. I wanted to train with Eric and Stan. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I moved out here, had a little money saved, and uh, I had that shitty ex-girlfriend or shitty girlfriend at the time. And we were out here for a couple months, and she was cheating on me, and it was real. We're, mind you, we're together for oh, that's five a to- years. That's a totally good feeling. It's great for a man's confidence. <sighs> totally and, good and, and productivity. I think I made the right team, decision yeah. moving to Vegas. <laughs> 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 oh, you shit! <laughs> like shit, you were a whore in our hometown. Yeah, like, I brought you to Las Vegas. All right, all right, let the whore out of you. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that didn't go well, yeah, obviously, and then yeah. that ended. And then, um, mind you, so when I was out here, I was training again now with Eric and Stan Efferdine and guys like that. And, you know, Stan Efferdine, he's the OG that he, he, he's the vertical diet guy, correct. right? Like, dude, I've, I looked at his social media. Um, um, I fucking love him. He just does very simple videos from his house. And Rhino you, can rants. T- you can tell he's like an older guy, but he's trying to stay with the modern times. He's right. got great fucking content wealth and, and knowledge. he's a genius. Yeah. Wealth and, and, knowledge. And, and I fucking, I love him. I right. love him. Yeah. And I'm, no one I'm late un- to him, but I love him. Right. Yeah. I, from my world, no one understands nutrition, supplementing protocols, mm-hmm. things like that, like Stan does. Right. Um, so he's a good guy to have in your corner. Yeah. But yeah. So I wanted to train with guys like that and, you know, learn from them and learn the way. And then just kept progressing and powerlifting and powerlifting. And then, like I said, I was training at that other gym. Once I met my wife, Jenny, that's when my powerlifting career, you would say, really took off. And when was this? <sighs> Probably 2013 or 14, 2014. I met her in 2014. And what were you like? And you, you but you, you didn't start out as a super heavyweight, right? Because no. you've done like 275 well, is where I started. That was your fucking, yeah. You yeah. had some world records or you had some records in Nevada here. I have, right? a, I yeah. have a, a bunch of world and national records for USPA, but yeah. I only care about the all time. Really? Yeah. Which is everything combined. So, yeah. yes, technically I've held world records. Yeah. Um, probably still do. Yeah. But, uh, they don't count. They're not the all-time world record, and that's yeah. all I really give a shit about. So, yeah, when I started powerlifting, I was 260 pounds, you know, and, and um, again, because I was, you know, bouncing at nightclubs, you know, and just doing whatever. I wasn't making good money when I moved out here. Yeah. And uh, it, it was, times were tight. You know, money was for real fucking tight. Right. Barely paying rent, you know, credit card debt and all that kind of bullshit. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I just, you know, my whole life changed, right? And then uh, I met my wife, uh, you know, who I started dating at the time. But when we first met... Like, um, she's way out of my league, super, way too hot for me, way too smart and everything. I don't know what the hell she's doing, but I don't know. I don't have a big dick either. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. <laughs> she probably has a really fucked up ex or something. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah, but when, uh, when me and Jenny started dating and then, you know, getting serious and everything, that's when, like, my strength, I was able to get so much stronger because um, not only did she, like, help me with, like, uh, just support in the gym with, making sure that I trained every day, making sure like, I was eating proper and I had all my meals in and she would bring food for me to make sure like, you know, and then, uh, yeah, you know, she helped me financially when we first started and everything. So she, really? it was just, that's what changed me. Like when me and Jenny met, I was like 290 pounds cutting to 275 to compete running trend and shit like that. To, yeah. like, you know, and just a fucking mess mentally. Yeah. And um, anyway, so, and then once you start dating, like, you know, six, seven months into it, I'm like hovering around 300 pounds. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, you know, it's a lot easier to eat when you have someone that's on board with you yeah. and like actually making your few meals and helping you. And then so from 300 pounds, then I was like force feeding to 315 and then cutting to the 308 class. And then I was like around 320, barely cutting to 308. And then eventually I was like, fuck it. 
It's just go super heavyweight. Yeah. Is that how it goes? 275, 308, and then you're super yeah, heavyweight? Yeah, because it goes off kilograms. Yeah. So it's like 100 kilo, 110 kilo, 125 kilo, and then uh, 140 kilo. So then when you so start doing the math there, yeah. on, in pounds, right. it's dude, all how, weird. How, 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 like, dude, I've, I've known you, and I've known you and Jenny, and you guys, like, I love this. Uh, how did you guys meet? Yeah, right? So, like, Jenny. She's a, she's a fucking stud. Yeah. Right? She's just like, she is like. My wife's six foot tall, blonde. Yeah. Tits. But, I've, but, you know, I've watched you in training and prep and for fucking, yeah. Like, <laughs> Jen, yeah, Jenny's a smoke show. Right. She really is. She you is. Know? But, but like, I've, 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 you know, like, you've been my coach in powerlifting, but I've watched you train. And, you, like, you got a fucking woman in your corner. Oh, yeah. Like, she is there. Ride or 100%. die. 100%. Yeah. She'll and tell me fucking, to sit down when she like, changes the weights. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And she'll, fu- she like, she, yeah. And she's like ripping your sleeves off yep. and and things like that. And she I know, wrapped she wrapped my knees. Yeah. She wrapped my knees for a thousand and eight fucking raw squats. She yeah. wrapped my knees. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. and like yeah, and she's and like uh, so. How did you guys meet? Because so I would uh, see her at the Gold Gym. This is before we got the boot from Golds. Yeah. They're, not, they're not even Golds anymore. They're all EOSs now. So um, we would be in our little section, powerlifting me and all my little powerlifting bros, and like. You know, Jenny would be walking around just a fucking dime and like way out of my league. And I would always like make jokes. I'm like, oh, I love that girl. Yeah. Like, I don't even know her fucking name, but I love her. And then, um, and I even said to one of my buddies one day, and I was like, dude, if I ever had a chance with that chick, I, I would fucking not fuck that like, up. If I ever had a chance with that chick, I'd fucking blow it. Yeah, I'd fuck it up <laughs> but real the seven bad. minutes I was in the game, I'm going to have a good time. Seven oh, minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. Uh, yeah, I know. So, funny story. We always see her at the gym, and like my buddies would know I'd get nervous and everything. I'd like talk stupid to her, and anyone know. So anyway, she's over on the dumbbell rack, and I'm like walking over there to get water, and the timing was just impeccable. Like she just got done like pressing on a bench, and then got up to set her dumbbells, and like my buddies are watching me, so I look over at them and like pretend like I'm racking a line of fucking coke on her seat, and like just. Uh. I look over at my I look over at my buddies. I'm like, yeah. And they're like, you sick fuck. Yeah. Fucking true story. The next day, I had fucking pink eye. <laughs> I was like, that fucking broad gave me an STD, and so we ain't wait, even dating yet. Your, your pickup line was, "Hey, you gave me pink eye. You owe me fucking right. yeah." Hey, you farted when you, you got off you that gave bench. Me pink eye. You know, well, like, wow. yeah. Oh, she fuck. she jokes today. She no, that pink eye was from Jerome. That's right. It was the dude who was on the seat before her. Uh, right. Yeah. So. <laughs> How'd you meet your wife? Right. You Whoa, meet your wife? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's a true story. And uh, again, we had met each other prior to this, like, and said hi and bye and everything. Yeah. Like, mind you, I was goggling over. I didn't know mm-hmm. what to do. So she didn't know this happened. I didn't tell her this until well into us dating. You know what I mean? I wasn't going to spill the beans. No, you can't give them power. Can't give them power. Can't give them the power. Right. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> a friend of mine, here we go with being a douche in the name drop, my buddy Jay Cutler. Mm. So uh, this was when around the 50th Olympia. Dude, or, like, I want to be friends with Jay Cutler. I don't know if he knows who I am. I would love to meet him, but I don't, yeah. So oh, yeah, we wind that up. That's just a, yeah. So he, uh, Jay. Jay <laughs> smiling <laughs> like a little 16-year-old girl, old girl right, right now. I've known Jay since I was like 15 or 16 from going to the Fit Expos and stuff like that. I've just known him forever. And um, it's crazy because his brain's like a still trap. He'll like remember Stuff like that. No from, shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know, like, for, yeah, he seems like a nice, like, totally just down. A, yeah, nice. Totally yeah. Down earth. Mm-hmm. yeah, so, uh, so Jay, Jenny is, Jenny, my wife is a massage therapist and she did all of Jay's massage therapy work through all of his Olympia wins and everything. She, she did all the work. I and mean, massaging is very important in um, bodybuilding. I'm not sure if people understand that, but st- stretching muscles and separating uh, heads and things like that's important. Anyways, Jay was going to start training for the 50th the Olympia 50th anniversary, he, he didn't do it, but he was going to start training for it. And he asked me if I would train with him at LVAC at LVAC. Cause uh, you know, you kind of need a couple guys to like, let people know, yeah. Hey, we're coming on this machine next, wrap it yeah. up. You know what I mean? I'm a good guy for that. So uh, we did a workout together at the LVAC and uh, took a couple pictures and everything. And then he posted them up on his page. Anyways, Jenny was working on Jay that night. So Jenny gets to Jay's house and me and Jenny knew each other. And she was like, oh, and Jenny called me meat. You know, she'd always call me meat. Just she just still a does. Meat. Yeah, she so still does. So is that old? Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, so I'm just a big old meathead. And so she's at Jay's house, and she had looked at his Facebook before she got there. And she's like, hey, you know you know meat? And then meat, he's like, he's like yeah, Brent. She's, she's like, like, I Allen. gave him pink eye. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't know this yet. She didn't know this okay, yet. Thank God. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, Jay was like, yeah, I've known Brandon for years. And uh, put in a little bit of good word, you know. And then nice. um, Jenny, uh, you know, slid in them DMs on Instagram. Nice. And, 
Nice. Been together ever since. Nice, dude. That's cool. That's yeah, that's cool. Cause, literally cause how we met. Dude, like, she, that's, um, you guys have a great relationship. If you're, if, uh, for you as an athlete competitor, that's the, if you don't have that, if, tough. You, if you have, or, it's tough. like, or neutral is good. Um, negative is I'm gonna positive. ruin your. But Jenny is she's dude. She's great. She, from what I see, she's like oh. so fucking so helpful. There's nothing yeah. fake about it. You yeah. know, like we don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you guys are in at the gym, yeah. she's still changing my weight. She's still yeah. taking my knee sleeves off. Yeah. She's still, and that's she wants to. She mm-hmm. wants me to be comfortable. Yeah. But again, this was when I was 360, 370 yeah. fucking pounds. Mm-hmm. I could barely move. Right. So it was almost a necessity because she kind of fed me to get there. So you, yeah. can't, you can't just fatten the pig up and yeah. just let him <laughs> right and make him get his own water. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. She yeah. kind of knew that was her obligation, I guess, because she was mm-hmm. the reason I got that large. Yes, yeah, so that's how we met, and we we started going to the gym together, working out. And then you know, I, I obviously was fucking head over heels for. Her. Yeah. And then once I felt that reciprocated, it was awesome. And then we we been together ever since. You know, literally, we got yeah. married for two or three years after that, and then yeah, been together ever since, man. Super lucky. So that's so that's that's cool because dude, that's I've, right. I've known them yep. and I, or I've known I've seen their relationship and like you guys have a that's that's the right dynamic you know like you know as a like a really cool or inspiring dynamic is like Conor McGregor and his wife mm-hmm. like because they yeah. were fucking broke ass poor right and now they're rich as fuck on top of the world and they're still in love like fucking poor people yeah. you know like yeah, and, see, and, we, we were pretty poor and now we're just not as poor right yeah and we still like, love each other yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're, we're less poor we're less yeah. poor now a little bit less <laughs> Less, less poor than yesterday. Yeah. Like we, we 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 buy the organic peanut butter now. That's right. We're budgeting. Yeah, yeah. we're yeah. budgeting. Yeah. So that's yeah. so, dude. Like so, so you, you you're fucking coming up in powerlifting. You meet Jenny. When do you decide to go with fucking super heavyweight and why? Because fuck, right. you got gnarly. That's a fucking life commitment. Oh, being yeah. being that big is 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 like all of a sudden. Like so, as, if you guys don't know, like being a super heavyweight powerlifter, you're that's that's your whole life. That's your fucking day job, and it doesn't pay the bills by itself unless you fucking win. And even when you win, it doesn't pay. Yeah, you gotta have a. <laughs> you have to have a brand. Yeah, you, and, yeah. And you got, so if you don't brand yourself, this isn't. Yeah. And if you're in this to make money, by all means, you trust right, me. You pick yeah. some. Go pick. Go play tennis. You'll yeah. make a ton more money. No, but that's the that's the weird thing about kind of our position is is like we're athlete by choice. We gotta fucking make money by because we our rent is. Due oh, this too. isn't it's Russia like where we thing. work for the government and yeah. go compete in their fucking programs. Right? Yeah. And, you know what but, I mean? but but we have similar mentalities. It's like we just we kind of just want to fucking whatever we choose to do. We want to be the best. And so, right. is that why you went super heavyweight? Is yeah. Because for me, it was pretty evident and obvious. Like I, I'm little. I'm definitely genetically blessed and for strength. I've, I like I told you, I was 12 years old. Been pressing like 200 fucking pounds. Like. Um, just That's fucking crazy. That's nuts, dude. When I, yeah, when I was in high, I benched 375 in high school. What the you know? fuck? Yeah, no, yeah. Not, like people thought I was good because I benched like 155. <laughs> but, you know, we had, we had people one beyond big, me even. I'm not, yeah. I'm not the freakiest of the freaks. Yeah. I just was definitely genetically blessed. We had one kid like that in high school, and I wish I could remember what what he. I mean, he was he was fucking huge. Spoto was benching 500 in high school. Wow. There's no gas. That's crazy. Well, if, if Max or Jack ain't benching that much, if we give them organic food. That's right. Like, we're just like, it. Combine, they better. You're out. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so. Where were we? <laughs> uh, what, what, like, what made you fucking decide oh, go to, to go super, super right, heavyweight? Right, right. So I knew that getting bigger meant getting stronger. It was just evident. You know, I'd put on five pounds of body weight, and I'd put on 15 pounds on my bench. Yeah. I'd put on 30, 40 pounds on my squat and deadlift. So we just knew getting bigger was the answer. And um, once I was above 308, you know, like, what are you, what are you going to do? You know, like, uh, it was either eat cleaner and then really focus on strength and then become the best 308 in the world. But that's just, I, I never. But then your best 308 Yeah, I'm not the right? best I yeah, could have been. I know is. if I got bigger, I could have been stronger. Yeah, the holy grail is the super heavyweight, biggest fucking maxes, biggest right, No one total. cares about weights yeah. and strength. Right? Yeah. Just care Wilks, about the fucking yeah. Wilks, what's your Wilks? What's your Wilks? Yeah. And it's funny is that I still have a higher Wilks and all those fat because <laughs> yeah. I fucking say that shit. <laughs> you know? But yeah, you know? So yeah, I just knew that getting bigger meant getting stronger. And yeah. then um, I, I, you know, I accomplished a couple of feats of strength that hadn't been done. Um, like what? Know, well, like in, uh, I was on, in 2016, um, Again, coulda, woulda, shoulda, but I was knocking on the door to break the all-time world record for raw um, total. It was a record that held for like 20 years from Dan Fout prior, I believe. Um, and it, it was just, uh, 
it was just something that was really cool. And I was thought I, was, I, I mean, it was like a given. It was just like, just show up and you're going to do it. Yeah. And that was the meet in 2016 where I coughed blood on my opening squat because of internal bleeding. What, oh, what, fuck. What was, what was the all time record? The total at the time was like 2289 was the total. And okay. I was like, I just did 2303 in wraps a few months prior yeah. and we held back a ton. Yeah. So we knew we could have squeezed probably the same. I think I squatted uh, 939 or 937, whatever the kilo conversion is. Just yeah. like in the beginning of that year in January. And then this was summer, June. So yeah. I had like almost six months to prep for this mm-hmm. in raw. And I was going to squat the basically the exact same amount of weight, but without the wraps this time. Yeah. And my bench, I, I benched 573 at that meet. And we knew, oh, no, no, no. I think that was 567, and I was and I was pretty sure I was going to bench 573 the next one, and then I think at the the meet that I told 23, I only pulled 798, like the one that's right below 800, and we knew I was on going to be 820 to 830. So I would have had I showed up and done well, I for sure yeah not well it's not for sure I would have broke the record though that at least that was projected, and um. Mind you, uh, that prep, I was juiced to the gills. Is that why you're coughing up blood? Or yeah. Like, yeah. So, <laughs> in 2016, I was, you know, balls to the wall, didn't matter, pin cushion, mm-hmm. eating. I was eating like 60 to 70 ounces of red meat a day. I was eating two cups of white rice a day. This was every day. That, mind you, my yeah. entire day no, was that's, force that's, feeding food all That's, that's day. the thing, and I, I, I wanted to talk about this today, and, and I have – some questions for a little bit later, but the fucking like the, 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 the life, like that's why like your choice to go super heavyweight changed everything. Fuck dude, right. the eating and there, there's no, there's no downtime because no. like you I mean, your downtime is you're sitting there fucking Covered. just like sitting, but you're fucking eating so much that you're never fucking comfortable, Miserable. but you're in the pursuit of fucking greatness, you know? Yeah. It's and a very selfish lifestyle. Yeah. Cause it's all about you, but that's what, but the championship, the champion lifestyle is we've right. all seen Rocky, man, right. Adrian get in, like, and you got your Adrian. Right. And it's like Jenny understands. Right. And so like you got that. And so you have a good fucking environment to be a fucking champion. Put it know? this way. 15, 20 years ago, the talent pool was much smaller in powerlifting. Yeah. So you could have just been genetically best and gen- genetically gifted and been the best right. and still having a social life. Yeah. Because the talent pool wasn't as deep. There's still genetic. Don't but now I'm not downplaying people, those guys. But now there's a shit ton of people, a hundred percent dedicated to the fucking sport. Exactly. And so if you're fucking only, if you're only ninety percent dedicated, you're losing. You're fucking. You're fucked. Because there's gonna be someone like, with, have fun at fifth there's place. There's gonna be someone yeah. with higher genetic potential than you. <laughs> yeah. That's only going at sixty yeah. percent. Is still doing better yeah. than you at ninety percent. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. Yeah, now that the talent pool's opened up, things have changed, and the yeah. numbers reflect that. Yeah. But yeah, in 2016, though, I was like full fucking throttle, didn't care whatever it took, force feeding, juice to the gills, running insulin, you know, just a ticking time bomb, you know? What the what does insulin do? The most what anabolic is, thing on planet yeah, Earth is insulin. Yeah. yeah. My dad had it because he was diabetic, right? But so <laughs> Should I fucking cop that shit off of him? Totally. <laughs> yeah, so insulin is like what delivers the nutrients to the muscles. So um, that's what makes you grow is getting nutrients to the muscles. You can only eat so much that your body's going to process and use for energy for your muscles or for growth or protein synthesis and things. But when you're running insulin, you can eat much more and then use that food really? for muscle growth. Right. That's fucking very cool. dangerous. Yeah. It's one of the only. Why is it dangerous? Because you can die from it. Um, you can get low, low blood sugar uh, so low that you go into a coma and literally die. And it's. One, it's one of the only drugs that bodybuilders, powerlifters, that strength athletes, strongmen abuse that can kill you, um, that can legitimately kill you like instantly. Like steroids can cause side effects that can end your life, but yeah. steroids themselves don't kill you. They couldn't kill you. Right. They give you complications with other stuff. Right, right, right. But um, with uh, with insulin, you can legitimately take a shot and die. And die. Right. So and especially if like you have a pancreas that doesn't produce um, constant insulin like mine, I'm a... I, uh, diabetes runs in my family. I'm hypoglycemic, so my sugar levels go up and down. So imagine if my insulin sp- spiked high, and then I took a shot. Now and then I thought I only needed to eat 100 carbs, something like that. But I really needed to eat way more. 100 carbs is a ton, but yeah. the family thought I need to eat 30 carbs. I really needed 100. That's where you can get in trouble. And then guys fall asleep on insulin and don't wake up. Oh shit! Yeah. So is this what ha- like there's there's some big name bodybuilders and stuff in the last two years that have gone down. Several. Is this, is this like, is it insulin? That's a, that's a, that's, it's a, like I said, like we just said, it's a, uh, it's multiple things compounded onto it. 
it's insulin on top of growth hormone on top of yeah. IGF so that, on top of like, that's, that's where we that's where it's gotten in the fucking sport, man. It's we just like, lost the guys kind this of weekend. Like, we lost like, Luke Sandoval this it's, weekend. It's, it sucks. Who's this? We lost a, a bodybuilder this weekend. Last What's his weekend. name? Luke Sandoval. He's uh, he was an Iron Rebel guy for a little bit. Big. Uh, he's from the UK. Okay. Um, very loved guy in the bodybuilding world. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. He, he um passed away. Just no shit. Fuck. But that's uh, you know, it's but that's where it's at in the sport. That's how that's how extreme things are. And if you want to be the fucking best, you have to do everything right, and that includes training. Food, recovery. One foot in the grave, too. Drugs. Yeah. You're fucking risking it. You're fucking risking it. And that, but that, but that's that's where it's gotten to. And at what point? I don't know. And at, and at some point, does it need to come back to? <laughs> I don't well, know. This is, this is tough, where I challenge. Yeah. This is where I, or I don't. This is where I kind of uh, argue with what you just said. I think it's always been there. Um, yeah. The difference is, is that uh, it's more in your face now. Because think about this. Uh, 10, 15 years ago, if someone died in the bodybuilding world, who the fuck would know? Right. I mean, unless you pick up bodybuilding magazine or, you know, or maybe, uh, maybe 10, 15 years is a little more shallow. Maybe 20 years is what I mean. Just talking about like the speed of information being Correct. like people Social being connected. Media. Yeah. Social media. So, and then not only that, there's more knowledge. Like here I am talking about steroids, you yeah. know, on a podcast that's sure. been listened to by a lot of people. Yeah. This didn't exist not that long right. ago. Yeah. You know, and there wasn't, it was like, you know, steroids, that's taboo. We don't do that. Yeah. But meanwhile, like fucking one out of six people, you know, on steroids. Yeah. You know, no, like, do, oh, dude, <laughs> dude, fuck it. Everyone's like, oh gas. my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. I didn't know how fucking prevalent they were until two years ago when I met you and I was talking to you about it and things like that. Yep. And now I look around and like everybody's on fucking gear. Yep. I was like, what? But And most of these people are on fucking gear and they still suck. Well, that's I'm what like, I laugh. Why, why do you suck? I laugh when guys are running two grams of train a week, yeah. never sleeping, not just miserable <laughs> to bench fucking 250 pounds. I'm yeah. like, that, that's yeah, what you're like, doing that for? I do, I, yeah, I do 315 natural, man. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I've been doing this for 17 years. Can you? Um, can I ask for a favor? Yeah, I've drank all. Claws my beers. up, boys. I need, I need a claw. You got a what's, your, what's your What's your favorite? What's your favorite? Claw. No, what's your favorite? <laughs> what's your favorite? That all, one. All of them. The one, yeah. the one with what's the your white. Favorite? You don't, you don't yes. have a favorite flavor, dude. They're all so good. I was well. I started. I start my. I started a big raspberry fan. Okay. I, I like the limes, but dude, I, I never thought I would in the world. I never thought I would like black cherry, Okay, but I do. I like black cherry. I, I think, I think black cherry is my favorite, but you can't commit. Most to people, favorite. most people are grapefruit haters. I'm like, yeah, mm. they're terrible. Mm -hmm. I think they're pretty good. No, <laughs> I'm down. I'm down with grapefruit. Thanks yeah. for the claw. I yes, appreciate it. Yes, sir. I'm rejuvenated. Dude, those are so, they're Refreshing. so fresh. Yeah. Owen, you're missing out. I'm not going to peer pressure you. Yeah, no, I know. No, I'm not going to pressure just sip you. On one? No. no. Because right. I'll like it, and then I'll want to have one, and then it's the whole like getting over yeah. the craving. Part. I get it, I get it. Yeah, I'm horrible at it. I, I'll, I'll try. I'll have a weak moment, have a sip, and I'm. Like, I'm like the right king back. of weak moments. Like I, I like. No, like, we're not gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. Uh. So, super hip. I wanted to talk about. Um. I think. I think. You know. I've known you now for a while. And I think your biggest competition, the biggest competition of your life was probably Big Dogs, right? That's the that biggest was, competition was, there is. Yeah, and that was the biggest one right. you did. Um, and that that was what year? 2018. Yeah, so Big Dogs is... So there's a little lead up to that. So Okay, okay so in uh, 2016, as we were talking about before, when mm -hmm. I coughed up blood on my opening squat, um, uh, a lot of went wrong with that. Um, Over-geared, over-training, uh, improper warm-up. Long and short, I walked out. I walked out from squatting, face ghost white, blood pouring out of my mouth. And my coach looks at me and he's like, "Go to your room. Like, you're done. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> go to your room, like, coach. I just right. showed up. Like, I yeah. go to my hotel room. You so know, and you were was, supposed to fuck in. Yeah, that was my meet. Everyone yeah. was there. I was about to break the world record. I, I, the whole fucking place it seemed like was there for me. And here I am running off the bat, trying not to talk to anyone, like try, doing my best to hold the tears down and get up to my hotel room. No shit. So you just bailed out the whole fucking he, rest well, of the Well, he day. just told me, he's like, dude, you're done. He's no like, shit. He's like, I can't you, let you lift. You are not going to die in front of right. all these people. Right. Yeah. He's like, you got to go. So that was a, that was a eye opener. And that's when I knew I had to get healthy. Yeah. So um, I came off all the gear uh, and just, I, I went from 300 and I don't know, I was probably 367 in that range, 365. I was enormous. And I dropped all the way down to 282. Okay. So casual fucking 80 pounds. Go, right? eh? yeah. Drop <laughs> so yeah. Dropped all the way down to 282 and uh, changed my training, changed my dieting, got healthy and, you know, got everything right. And then um, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to make a comeback, but I'm going to do it at a lighter weight. 
I don't need to be that big. I, I, I felt like I can do what I did at that weight and like at like three twenty. You know, I didn't think I needed to be a three sixty seven. Three, you know. So, uh, so uh, sorry to interrupt. So after three oh eight, it's just open, open, super season. heavyweight. So you could be three hundred nine pounds, so seven hundred pounds. Yeah. So it's so it's so there's no so place. it almost fucking behooves you to get fucking bigger. Well, as you get bigger, your squat can go up, your bench will go up, and your deadlift suffers because your belly gets in the way and it changes your leverage points. Really? So there is a point of being too big to where you can no longer pull yeah. proper. And uh, it all has to do with leveraging the lengths of your arms and everything like that. And uh, three yeah. sixty ish was too big for me to pull properly. Really? Yeah. Much. Is there big. a way to find out like what your fucking optimal weight for your body ratio is, or do you I'm just, sure you just, you just feel that out? I'm sure some nerd at home is yeah. like, oh, actually, well, that's, dude, that's fucking the formula. Fuck, it's twenty. I have a spreadsheet man. for that. That's how athletes are so fucking good now. <laughs> right. Because true. They know so much. Right. They're like, well, they they they've done the geometry right. of how to not be a pussy. Like right. they're still pussies, <laughs> but they understand trigonometry. Right. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm sure yeah. Yeah. there is, but yeah. you know, yeah, trial and error. Yeah. Trial so, and error. Yeah. Yeah. So I so I was coming back at training. I was too. So like 295 when I was like starting to get strong again, I was taking low testosterone and things like that and feeling good. And I was going to do a meet at 308 at the end of the year. So I started prepping and uh, I was doing just a little uh, like a qualifier. You need to qualify for nationals. And um, I was just going to like squat 600, bench 500 and deadlift 600 just because. You could literally do that when you wake up in the morning. Before. Right. Yeah. yeah, that was... I didn't even need to <laughs> warm up. That's how fucking strong this right. guy is, dude. It's crazy. fucking That would have been cold. I could have yeah. eaten And I literally did it cold. So I'll tell you the story. It's actually funny. So we're having a little private meet at my gym. Well, yeah. I say private. It wasn't private because it's open meet for anyone. But it was a qualifier. So it wasn't like a big thing. It was just a little qualifier. But you fucked up your shoulder, right? Poor. Yeah. So I hit my squat, which is like 600 pounds. It was a huge yeah. rack. Hello. Right. Yeah. And then, like, mind you, like, I used to, like, have, like, a porn addiction problem. Like, I, yeah. I've definitely addressed that but i used to look at porn all the time like i would like be in the middle of a like set like looking at porn like saving videos for later and i'm at my meet. i'm gonna come back to this one <laughs> I, i'm at my <laughs> meet. bookmark <laughs> bookmark <Yeah>. this shit <laughs> and then don't ever look at the related video because you gotta go see that one next yeah. <laughs> so i'm like looking at porn and then they're like oh brandon you're up to bench i was like oh i literally didn't even warm up i like set my phone now while it's still playing because <laughs> i don't want to miss that scene <laughs> i go up and I fucking unracked 500, and on the way down, right when it gets to my chest, right when you press, you kind of engage your super and infraspinatus, yeah. your teres minor. Right when you, right when I engage, really? I locked it out and racked it, and I was like, I just tore my fucking shoulder. It was so loud, the side judge thought I thought my shirt got caught on the bench, and that's what it tore. Oh, I was like, no, that was so my it shoulder. Was kind of your fault almost that that injury happened or cause you weren't prepped enough or I wasn't warmed up. You didn't, you didn't care enough. I didn't and care. Really? I was like 500 yeah. pounds. I can do that in my sleep. Dude, I know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, bro. That's fuck, when you get hurt. Man. That's get, always when you get hurt. It's like the things we do in our twenties, right? Right, you're, right. Like, you're 28, 29 yep, at 27, this point. I think, yeah, yeah. Just fucking a little too complacent. Yeah. Just thought yeah. I didn't, I didn't yeah. care. You know, I was like, I can yeah. do this normal. Yeah. So I turned my shoulder. I <laughs> just, I was like, what, what next? You know? Yeah. So, um, but again, Kind of a blessing oh, in disguise. Life, life had something coming next. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Almost a blessing in disguise, though, because yeah. I was probably going to jump back on all the gear too hard, too fast. You yeah. know, I didn't give my body enough of a break. Mm -hmm. So that happened. Fast forward another six months, that heals up, ready to start training again. Um, it's like towards the end of the year, uh, less than six months. So it's towards the end of the year, and uh, the big meet in L.A. is the L.A. Fit Expo, which is uh, uh, it used to be a pro invitational, which yeah. I have invited to every year. Mm -hmm. And it's the qualifier now, which sucks. But anyways, it was a pro invite, and I've done that meet every year for like five years in a row. And I was like, all right, you know what? Let's go because I wanted to do Kern. Kern is the big U.S. meet, right? And Big yeah. Dogs is the big world meet. And no, so, and just for my memory, like the LA Fit Expo, what year was that? Was that 2017? Or that was must that was the very beginning January, of 2018. Because I went to that. Yep, you went. I went to that, and I came home with fucking norovirus. Yep. Oh, <laughs> yep, yeah, sick. Off about it. I never wanted to go to L.A. But I went to L.A. Fuck to, 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 it's dirty. And Stay and the fuck I, and out of there. I came home and I was yep. in the hospital for three days. Right. It's hepatitis like, everywhere. Fuck L.A. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so I, uh, so I was like, all right, well, I need to do a meet to get my feet wet before the Kern. Because the Kern is the big U.S. meet, which yeah. is, um, uh, it's a Wilkes. That's how you went in. It's off Wilkes. So a super heavyweight doesn't typically get favored. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I'm competing against Yuri, and which is the best so, fucking dude, 220. What is Wilkes? Cause I, I, I understand it. I can't I, tell you. Yeah. It's so it's, look it up, but it's, it's like a fucking, if, if you guys don't know, like in powerlifting, there's the Wilkes score and it, and it, and it 
it's a uh, it's a number that somehow calculates your body weight and your overall total lifts. Correct. And so it's something like that. It so, favors so, the but medium you're, you're, you like you you care about and respect one thing: super heavyweight, biggest fucking total. Right. You don't care about right. the fucking so, algebra equation that says pound for pound, pound who for was pound. the best lifter because right. pound for pound doesn't exist. Doesn't it's not a fucking right. real thing. And it's to not, quote and Brandon like, Lilly, another guy who I looked up to him a real long is that there's no weight class in the jungle. No, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, the jungle. It's that's what they're doing. Like, you're not going to like this, but that's a common saying in CrossFit, too. Oh, is there's, there's no oh, fucking... Brandon might not have invented that. I'm just saying <laughs> no, that's who I heard it no, from. No, it's like, I, I don't know who it... But, like, yeah, that's that's a that's a real thing in sports and in CrossFit. There's no... There's literally no weight class in CrossFit or something like that. There's no weight class in the jungle. It's a fucking free-for-all. Right. But I, I, I like that and respect that. Um, just the same as you do. Like, right. there's one fucking top dog, right. and it's the super heavy, that's all that matters. biggest fucking right. total top dog. Right. You show pound. me someone that compares, uh, and but pound for pound, I can lift as much as you. It's like, hey, motherfucker, have you ever been underneath one thousand and eight pounds? Right. Have you ever had a thousand and eight pounds on your back? No. Pound so for pound is like the same dorks that play Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> yeah. that say they got you with their fucking wet magic yeah, card. Yeah. yeah, no, 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 it doesn't exist. <laughs> Doesn't exist. I fucking use a spell. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fucking fire spell. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was I wanted to get my feet wet, do the LA meet, and then get ready for Kern, which is the biggest US meet and big money, yeah. forty grand the for LA the winner. You just kind of did casually, and you won, oh yeah, right? yeah. Like, yeah. I just that was the first that was the first meet I went and, and watched. Um, I didn't know shit about powerlifting at the time, and I think uh, so. It was January twenty eighteen. I was just that's when I started powerlifting. That's when I started powerlifting. So I was, and Brandon, I hired Brandon as my coach. Um, and so we went to watch and support. And that was my first powerlifting meet I ever went to. And you just, I, as from my, what I can remember, you just casually yeah. won that. And I was like, oh yeah, that's my coach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've known him for three days. Yeah, yeah, like. <laughs> yeah. I was pretty stoked to be up there and see you with my filthy shirt yeah. on the crowd. I was like, uh, I made it, Ma. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know, that was dope. Yes, yeah, so we did that, and then I got ready for Kern, which was the big U.S. meet, which yeah. is a rap meet, and that's like the, there was the, this is 2018. This is the, mind you, 2018 were the best meets ever. I'm not saying that just because I competed in it, maybe I am, yeah. but those were the two best meets. Kern 2018, Big Dogs 2018 were the best. Was Big meets. Dogs 2018? Yeah. It was that long. Oh fuck, dude, time flies, man. Big Dogs three. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Kern. Yeah, um, so we did a uh, Kern. I uh, that's when I went out there and uh, I lost 30 grand yeah. on my last deadlift. Yeah. I guess I never even had it. So. Uh, no, you've yeah. I had it. So I was competing against Yuri who, um, well, I was, I was competing against the super heavyweights first. Um, and then we worry about the score. Yeah. You the won Wilkes. super heavyweight, yeah, yeah. but you lost Wilkes. So you, I got you, second you got, on Wilkes. Yeah. So, but like right. second lost. is losing. Lost. Yeah. Right. So, so <laughs> yeah. Yuri, second's not yeah. winning. Right. So Yuri's a two forty two er from Russia. He's a fucking freak. Yeah. Like just a freak, like a twenty three hundred pound total at that at that time. He's got yeah. more than that now. I think he was actually a high twenty two. I, I could be wrong. Anyway, so I I uh, total twenty three eighty that meet. If I had hit my last deadlift, it would have been twenty four hundred. But um, which was a huge deal at that time, especially it never really been done. It was like maybe one or two other guys that had done at that time. So Yuri luckily was in the flight before me, so we got to see what he pulled in order. For, then I knew what I had to pull to win, because super heavyweight I go last, and I had to. He had a bigger pull than me, but I had I was the biggest on of that out of that flight. Actually, it was me and Larry Wheels were the last two to deadlift. Yeah, we closed right, it out. Yeah. So um, I needed to pull eight eighty seven, and I would have beat him on the Wilkes, but unfortunately, uh, I uh, my my hands gave. So what what did you is that what you pulled eight eighty seven eight eighty seven I remember that though like right. oh, well, really? Larry pulled eight eighty one. Yeah. And I saw Larry pull, and then I, I don't know yeah. why. I just, yeah. like, mind you, my coach wanted me to only pull 860, secure the 2,400-pound total, um, don't go for the win, just yeah. go for the big total, and we'll worry about your next no, I was this, like, This I was seems like, to be your mentality for life. I go for the win. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't get, I don't play that shit. I was yeah. like, okay, so I already got second, so I won 10 grand, and I won 1,000 yeah. for winning the super heavyweight class, so 11 grand. I'm already in the, I already win 11 grand. Yeah. If I win this last deadlift, that's another 30 grand. So yeah. if I pull the 860, I don't win 30 grand, but if I pull the 87 with her in, what am I going to do? Right. We're yeah. going for the fucking right. win. Yeah. So we loaded that motherfucker up. Yeah. And, uh, dude, I, I couldn't believe it. You watched the dude, video. You, I no, ripped I, I, it. I was there. Yeah. I was oh, there. yeah, yeah. I was there. You fucking ripped it. And you were <laughs> the, you and were happy about it at the top, but so, I think you can't lose your focus with 880 in your hands no. for even two seconds no. or not even like points. 
two point two right. seconds. So it, it, it surprised the shit out of me. Yeah, he I, fucking ripped right, it I was ready off to fight. Floor, I was yeah. I was like, all right, this is gonna be a, <laughs> a thirty second fight. I'm ready. Oh, you know, right. took a good breath. He just stood up and he and was just, like, Shit. yeah. And then when I walked out, it seemed like they're just like, hmm, let's check our time. Yeah. But watching the video was a very good call. It was just yeah. up, locked out, down. But I'm holding up like, get the fuck, come on! And then he says down, and as I'm going down, it's rolling. Yeah. I mean, oh, it's coming shit. out of my hand. And now you're on well, your fingers. You know, so, so, so you understand they don't use straps or oh, anything yeah. like that in powerlifting. Yeah. He's just holding right. 900 pounds in his fuck or 887 yeah. in his Bare fucking hands. hands. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going down with it, and uh, you have to control it all the way down in powerlifting. So in hindsight, watching the video, I could have I could have rode that bitch down. Like I could have gone faster. There's tricks to do. You're right. There's right, tricks sure, to the train. Yeah. I was so excited. Yeah. It blacked out. No, obviously. that's the that's the thing. You were you were. Just, I was like, just won forty one thousand fucking dollars. Let's just, go, just, baby. Like, Let's dude, get it. Like from from right. from a spectator, like you were you were too happy too soon, and yep. it fucking. But Drop. dude, like that's not like. So here's 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 my perspective from from this day's meet. I fucking drive my ass all the way out to San Diego to watch my friend. It's a long. It's a six four six four, and a half six, oh, a, we're, we're six and a half hour, hour drive. We bought a hotel and stuff like that. So we're like, yeah, we're gonna support Brandon. He's gonna do really good at this meet. Um, and then your squats. <laughs> oh, yeah, the drama, the so, drama. So if you guys don't know, powerlifting meets go, you do your squat, your bench press, and then your deadlift. And you do you three do, attempts. You get three attempts at the squat. And if you if you fail to um, um, put up a good squat, you're done for the day. Correct. And you went, you went 0 for 2. So, right? little like, backstory. <laughs> so, so I would like. So we're, we show up. We're all hyped for Brandon to do well. And I'm about to bomb out. And, and we'll then go home. We, we're all the way there. Like the fucking first like thirty minutes. We're like, uh, what the fuck is going on? Because um, what happened with your squats? Like, well, first off, I put so much pressure on myself on that meet because I was talking <laughs> yeah. so much shit to all the super heavyweights. I was in all their fucking heads, doing putting podcasts out, making fun of them. So I'm just talking all the shit. How I'm gonna crush everyone in the squat and this and that. And then all, <laughs> my opening squat was 925, which was just you know rocking fast. And they called me on depth. They were like, it was the craziest day ever. Yeah. They were. I watched 15 to 20 calls that were just completely well, wrong, especially the second attempt. So so Brandon so Brandon. Oh no, that one stapled me. Yeah. Oh, oh the right. second one yeah. stapled me. Yeah, so they were right. saying that you did not go down far enough. Correct. Yeah. So you can retake that weight. You can never take less weight, okay. but you can retake the weight you missed yep. or go up. So, but if you don't complete, you're done. So I missed the 925 because they front on depth and without hesitation, my next attempt was 975 because I wanted to squat 1014, 1003 to 1014 that day. Okay. So, uh, so I, th so 975 is my second. So my coach talked to me. He's like, dude, they're being fucking crazy. Yeah. He's like, you just, you got to suck it down lower. You got to get lower. I'm like, I'm, I'm, am I not squatting legal? He's like, no, you're squatting legal. He's like, they're just being, fu I don't know what to tell you. He's not counting. So, you know, mind you, it's 975 pounds. The most I've ever had on my back prior to that was 950 in prep. So I, it's wait, mind you, I always, my second attempts are PRs. My third attempts are fucking sell it. You know what I mean? Right. That's just how I train. So uh, I pick up the 975 and I walk it out and like, I don't know, man. It's just. It just, I was like so in my head about the refs. So I was like, I got to touch my tiny balls on the fucking floor. <laughs> and uh, that stage was wobbly as fuck. Everyone was having problems with it. And I dropped down and I, I know I'm at depth, but in my head, I'm like, no, I'm not. I got to go lower. And I watched the video. It's so silly on how low I try to go with 975 pounds. Yeah. I literally try to touch my balls on the ground and I come up and it just staples me back down. Yeah. And so, oh. so the, what, 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 what they're saying. So like, here I am in the crowd, right? I'm like, fuck yeah, let's go, Brandon. 925, two reds and a white. I was like, uh -oh. what? Okay. So he comes out with 975 and he goes down and doesn't stand up. And in my head, I'm down. like, did I fucking come out here six hours, spend 500 bucks on a fucking hotel <laughs> to watch this guy fucking go home Bomb out. after 40 minutes? Yeah. Yep. So, <laughs> so uh, we were hyped up as fuck for because so you took 975 for missed. your third attempt. Wait, wait, okay, for, so like, for first, after you, when you hit an attempt, right when you're done, yeah. you go to the judges' tables to tell them your next attempt. Yeah. So um, I hit the, the 975 and get stapled. You tell them what you're going to do? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So I get stapled under it, and then they picked it off me. I looked at the judges. I'm like thousand three. Like I, I didn't, I didn't care. Fuck it, we're Jack, going live. Yeah, yes, yes. Interject. Yes, because I didn't give a fuck. Because the way I looked at it, I was like, I'm squatting a thousand today. Yeah. I'm winning these super heavyweights. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. So yeah. Chad comes over and he goes, "It's a long drive home." 
Yeah. Oh, no shit. That's what he said? Yep. That's fucking cool. He's like, it's so a he, long drive home. Yeah. I was like, 975. <laughs> 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 Let's retake that yeah. one. <laughs> So, and, so, and then you dunked it and fucking he stood right stood up with it i was like yeah. shit i need a thousand three yeah. fuck yeah but yeah so right. then i hit 975 it was the biggest squat of the day um yeah and i smoked it and you know again great you know right i, I survived it mm-hmm. so then we went on to bench mind you this is what pisses me off because this third attempt bench ruined my third attempt deadlift because on uh i benched 589 if you remember correctly smooth as butter and locked it, and they gave me reds. And the call, they, the, the, when they, they gave me red light, two red lights, and then I'm like, what the fuck's the call? And the one judge is like, oh, uh, the, your arm went like uh, this, and then the other judge jumps, he's like, oh, it was downward motion. He's like, oh yeah, downward motion. So the it wasn't even so the right. So nobody fucking knew, but they just it, came together. It, right, yeah. so my coach jumped all over him. You know I mean? There's no reason to do at the time, because there's nothing that you can do. And when I say jumped all over him, he just said it was bullshit. And yeah. Right. On. So uh, we, you know, we moved on. What are you gonna do? So I got credited a uh, five seventy three or five sixty seven was my bench for that meet. Mind yeah. you, if I hit that five eighty nine, I would only needed to pull eight sixty to win. Yeah. So now yeah. we go into my third deadlift. Um, you know, I think I pulled eight eighty eight forty three on my second, which moved well. You smoked all of them that yeah. day, even your last one. Yeah, even my last <laughs> one, just gonna hang on to the bench. Yeah. So uh, again, like in hindsight, I would only needed to pull eight sixty, which we know. Would have been yeah. a fucking winner, and I would have fucking won forty forty one thousand dollars. Yeah, but you you literally dropped thirty thousand dollars. I know, and at, and at first, and I remember, and at first, you were kind of like ha ha about it, right? And then on your drive home after a while, it started to set in. <laughs> that, that, That's not that, such a funny joke yeah, anymore. Right. He's like, oh, it's cool, I'm cool, I'm cool. Right. And then three hours later, you're like. Fuck! If you want to laugh, if yeah. you want to laugh, go check out my Instagram. Yeah. It's on my. It's still on my oh, stories. Did you save those? Yeah, you know your stories. You, you have two you, things. You, you did the highlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah highlight. <laughs> it's on my highlight. So you go I mean, get a good I, I laugh. I don't mean to laugh. I would, but I would. I would. Do the same thing, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And, so I'm, I'm driving home. I'm just like, you know, I was real big on my IG back then. I'm like fucking doing, you know, the story update. I'm like, yeah. So it's all right. You know, I mean, it didn't go as planned. Da, da, da. And then the next video was like, man, fuck that, dude. Yeah. Fuck everyone. Yeah. And then the next video, I'm like, no, I'm cool. No, I'm no, cool. I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool. It's okay. I, you know, I think you and I are very similar as far as our competitive drive. And so, like, I, I knew the pro, because I was just a spectator. Bro, I, I wanted to cry. But, dude, bro. but like, I was but so you, were, upset. you were like, haha, it's all good about it. It's just my, like, that was the and shell. I was just telling Stacey, I was like, no, it's not. It right. is not all good. No, I was not okay. Said, yeah, I was but, I was, I but not, I was you know, happy. but you learn and you get better. Right. You learn and you get better, and you got way fucking better. And so, like later on, we're in 2018 still. You're ready for big dogs. I, yeah, you're and and big dogs is for the people that don't know. Big dogs. It's well, only it's, meat it's, that matters. It's kind of what it sounds like, right? right. It's fucking big dogs. Big dogs. Oh, this is this is it's held in Australia. There's only ten invites. Okay. They'll so they'll invite the top ten super heavyweights in the world, yeah. and then whichever ones can come because mind you, not everyone can go to Australia. Sure. Yeah, whichever ones can come go, and then they fill in the rest of the spots, kind of with the locals. The yeah, okay. well deserving yeah. guys, yeah. but probably not ready for big dogs. Sure, you know what I mean. But uh, definitely, but the legit. champion will definitely be at big dogs, like the, the fucking. The so best. this is this is in the world. These these are the best. Know, this is powerlifting, and this no is weight the, class. The strict standard. And it's just it's just whoever fucking lifts the most wins. Right. No will. No yeah, bullshit. There's no. Yeah. There's just no biggest lift. Right. You can't tie. Yeah. Yep. There's no dull winners. It's, it's big, like the Red Bull Rampage, it's, it's, it's which is downhill, dogs, yeah. but for <laughs> exactly. but if you for like heavy. downhill mountain biking, there you yeah. go. Or it's the Super Bowl of power. Lifting, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. It's the only fucking one that matters. And, yep. and, you know, in my eyes. And um, you know, so we knew obviously. Okay, so I didn't even talk about my body weight with Kern. We kept me low. I was 323 pounds for Kern. And um, pretty low. That's yeah. pretty low. It's like I was, you know, <laughs> well, when like, I was I competing at 360. Between, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm like kind of force yeah. feeding myself. Yeah. And I did that on purpose because, well, for one, I didn't want to be huge for that meat. And for two, because I was competing for the Wilkes. So I might need my body weight lower. Oh, so, and so in Wilkes, every pound matters. Every pound matters. So like fucking you're, if you're a super heavyweight, you're, you're fucked. just fucked, fucked because there's a cap for everybody else. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, fucking like the, but the Wilkes and it matters in payouts. It's only important because it matters for fucking payouts. Mm-hmm. Which sucks. Every yeah. meet they're like, oh, we're going to give money to the Wilkes winner. I'm like, fuck, I'm going to total 200 pounds more than that guy. And you're going to give him the fucking yeah. money. Yeah. The hell kind of shit like, is that? Okay. If you want this Wilkes prize, put 
975 pounds on your back. Right. And if you don't die, I'll give you this. Right. Grand. Right. That's how it should be. <laughs> Do you, if you die, I want your wedding band, your car. <laughs> right. your house, yeah. that, that's why Big Dogs is so popular and so yeah. amazing. It's, 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 the it's best fucking nasty, the dude. Best. There's no rules. There's no rules. Yeah, it's dope. Except you got to hit all your. Oh well, yeah, it's perfectly strict lifting, clean, but it's but it's just who's right. yeah. No bullshit, and uh, the best in the world are gonna be there. And uh, I'm a I strive in like competition and like yeah you, dude, you, you, put, you put people near me up. that are yeah. strong i'm gonna make sure i'm working harder they may be may have better genetics yep. but i know i'm gonna do some shit that they're not gonna do in the gym yep. and I, you were a part of some of those workouts i mean you know how gnarly they were i was in there yeah. for four hours every single day yeah uh, well four days a week every single training day eating in between training and doing workouts that i look back at now i'm like that's like a week's load of work i was doing in a day I mean, but to be that strong, it's what it fucking takes. Oh, it's crazy. You know? And I, and I do like, and I remember, you know, cause like this was like, so you're gearing up for big dogs three, 2018. And this is, this is your fucking, this is your meat. This is, this is everything to you in your life. And you were it, dude in training, you get stressed out totally. and, and like, um, but Jenny was there for you and some, like, so I, I saw you kind of like un, un, unleash on Jenny a couple times, yep. but only because you're stressed and things like that. But the coolest yep. fucking thing, man, she understood that. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. She, like, did. she and, did. And you guys were a fucking great uh, ass uh, team. A little guys, funny story about right. me like, unraveling on Jenny <laughs> in a stupid fucking way that she didn't deserve it at all was. Uh, I don't remember what prep it was, but, you know, juice to the fucking gills, mm -hmm. irritate it. Yeah. Not, you're just no not happy because you're just hurt. No right. patience. Yeah. Yeah. You're not sleeping. Your eyes are dark. Yeah, it's miserable. Anyway, yeah. so I bench 605 in the slingshot, like, mm -hmm. stupid fast, right? And mind you, my wife spots me for every lift, no matter what. So she spotted me for 600 pounds over my chest, and I, I just crush it in the racket, and then I'm all, I'm all like, you know, fucking jazzed up, and babe, Jenny's like, babe, you could have doubled that. I'm like, double it, Jenny. Double it. <laughs> 1,210 <laughs> pounds. All right, <laughs> load it up. <laughs> I'm like, load it up then. I'll do 1,200 pounds, I guess. And then but, she's like, I meant for two reps. No, yeah. like you could have done another but dude, one. The stress. So sorry, baby, it was the trend. But, but the, but the stress, like, so you're you're chasing down big, like the point, like the stress of being, the stress of wanting to be a fucking champion, the stress it puts on a relationship, oh, it's, it's, it's fucking brutal. real, man, because, and they're like, because it's a selfish thing, dude. It's selfish and, and, and your partner is just like, hey, you're being selfish. And in your head, you're like, I, I know, know I'm winning. but I want to be I'm a winning. fucking champion. Right. I have a fucking champion's heart. I don't know. I was born like this. Nope. I don't know how to fucking um, um, Mediocre, want, I don't, know, I don't know how to want to be happy with second place. I don't know how to want that. I fuck that's losing to me. Totally. That, you know, totally. It's like if this guy can do everything right, so can I. Right. Okay, yeah. so I can do every I can do everything fucking perfect, and they're yeah. like, it's a selfish sport. And like, I know, but well, somebody has to be the fucking champion. Well, and why and, not me? Right. <laughs> and know? luckily, I had yeah. a supporting wife. Yeah, and definitely eased everything yeah. that comes in it. And your big dogs prep went pretty good, I think. Yeah, right? when training like, went well. Like, uh, yeah. my, okay, so I I tore my patella tendon training for Kern. Okay, so the one the, that yeah, do that squat nine seventy five. Yeah. Right. So um, when I, after Kern, I took a little time off to let my knee heal up. And then, you know, seven or eight weeks, no training or anything. And then had an MRI done and my patella tendon was partially torn. My meniscus is torn. Both knees have been gone for a while. And um, basically my doctor was like, you know, he's like, I know what you're going to do. Yeah. Like, but you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he's like, I, he's like, honestly, he's like, you should rest. He's like, you should let that knee heal. I was like, yeah, well, I'm going to Australia in like four months. So that, you know, that ain't going to fucking happen. He's like, all right, well, so I got, I was taking BCP 157 and TB 500 religiously, which is a what peptide. Is, and what does that do? It repairs tendons and uh, ligaments and things like that. It's in a peptide injection. Okay. So I'm running that, you know, directly injecting into my fucking knee, you know, and, uh, it works to tell you that God damn. Yeah. 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 yeah it yeah. works <laughs> yeah. so i just gotta oil mine sometimes you know like <laughs> you if wouldn't I, know if you i get a little squeak i just oil her up you know <laughs> uh, i put wd Ready 40 i put wd 40 in mine what did you say you put in your yeah, age, exactly you know? <laughs> yeah, a little different bp 500 wd 40 yeah yeah so uh so we knew that i probably shouldn't have done that prep for yeah. australia but you know, I'm a but fucking. This is your fucking yeah, chance. what do you mean? Yeah. I'm gonna like, wait another year. I've been invited yeah. to Australia every year, but I, I'm not gonna spend 15 grand to fly out there until I know I'm gonna go out there and fucking win. Yeah. And I knew I was gonna go out there and win. Yeah. So I was, I was down. I, I was like, whatever it takes, I'll do it. So, um, you know, I, I trained there. Everything went great except for the last couple of squat sessions because my knee was so fucked up. So, uh, 
throughout that prep, though, um, my bench went great. Everything, you know, the deadlifts obviously went phenomenal. Yeah. Um, it was just a rough prep, but that's what I, I would. Nah, you were working hard, man. Yeah. I, I fucking, like, sometimes you would text me and be like, hey, you want to just, like, yeah, I come, come up here I and suffered. fucking cheer. Like, right. and, but, but, dude, like, the cool thing is, like, at your, at your gym, Filthy Power, um, people just show up to watch you oh, train yeah. and to fucking be support you and totally. cheer you on. That was fucking. That's hard to get, and that's. Uh, but, but it's, yeah. It's, and it, I was one of those, so and I was just one of those people. Like, yeah, you dude. inspire, you fucking, ins- I loved you so much, and you were doing such amazing shit. I just wanted to show up and be like, yeah, I want to support you. Right. You know, because. <laughs> and I, and I, I needed you know, it. Yeah, I was fucking, I needed like, it. that's cool that you made that kind of culture. That's how much. Totally. Um, he's loved and respected around yeah. here. And that's in cool. his gym. Yeah. I was definitely uh, very, I was very in a very unique situation to have that. I'm very lucky to have that. Because mind you, I would have. You're not lucky. You built it. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did a lot of work to make it happen. Yeah. But um, I'm lucky. <laughs> I'm lucky that it worked out the way it did. Maybe that's what I meant to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you and several other guys, my training partner, Foster, Big Chad, you know, you guys would come down. It would make those workouts a lot easier. Yeah. But you guys would leave after the big squat. Sure. Yeah. Right. Because well, you don't want to sit around and watch me fucking. Well, that, well that's the fucking. That's eat the, 30 that's, sandwiches. That's the right, right. The, and that's then the, do 20 glute That's the plight of the athlete. Like right. we had our lives too. Yeah, totally. And, and that's, and so like we've, I've said before, like, nobody care or it, it's it's okay that people don't care about you and your specific goals because yeah. everybody has their shit too totally. like yep. we would come and support when we could but i don't have fucking four hours in my day exactly to come watch you do hamstring curls man yeah, you he, know and those <laughs> and workouts so, but you have to do that I have if to. you want to be a fucking but champion dude, those those workouts after i would squat mind you i do block deadlifts after yeah, no. dude, i would almost I, almost every workout when we cleared out tears, is like, when the fucking workout that's started when the real work started, and you're right? like oh, that's the mental the mental yeah. battle mm-hmm. i'd have king 810 on on yeah. repeat full fucking blast i would have pictures of australia the stage from the year before on my phone i would go and look at it and just like yeah <sighs> start yeah. getting crazy and then that's how i would survive those workouts yeah i would be like on the verge of quitting my yeah. hands would be bleeding i'm like i can't do i can't deadlift again my dent yeah. and, uh, and i'd like look at my phone and i would go see eric lily ridge training or i go see andre one of the big dogs yeah. and i'd be like no, I'm like you can't quit now because when I'm on stage in Australia, I'll think back like what a little bitch you were yeah. back then. You look at this glory you could have. You know what's funny, man? Is is like so you know like here on this podcast, you know, I think in life we, we're like we all help people with fitness here, right? Yeah. And 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 typically we help people that have different jobs and they have these yep. mental stressors and things like that. A fucking we're, we're I'm sitting across from a champion or like you're fucking. You're one of the best in the world in powerlifting. You've been injured for a while and things like, but you like you've accomplished things that people just don't accomplish. And this is it's all common. Yeah. It's all common. Same, same it's like you want right? people are like, oh, how do I stay motivated? I'm like, I don't fucking know because when we're in that shit and and I'm starting a fucking training cycle September first for a big competition and I'm gonna be scared and I'm gonna be totally. I'm gonna be fucking worked to the the of my max potential and i'm gonna want to quit and nobody's around and nobody gives a shit and i get mad that nobody fucking cares right. and people are asking me to do things i'm like fuck you dude it's cra- like everybody has their mental totally. shit um and no matter what level you're at so if you're just like or if you're uh you know a 45 year old female just starting you, out if you're a 45 year old overweight female you have the same fucking problems as brandon, brandon allen yeah, we're, we're trying fucking, to push ourselves to our capabilities <laughs> yeah and i was it's trying to push cool myself to my relative right. you That's know completely i completely really like that it's, yeah. it doesn't matter what your problems are you're going to have problems so whatever they are face them yeah and and you, you know what i never thought of that man what, what you said is like that we all left after your squat and that's very true that your real training started after after everybody left. That was the that's exciting what, one. That's the, what went on Instagram. And that was like the big shy that, but, show, but, you but know. But dude, it's that 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 sets you apart from the other people. It's all that extra. It's like who's right. gonna who's gonna fucking right. who's gonna buckle? Stay and, and, buckle and, and you're you're and so coming up to Big Dogs Australia, you're going against only people who don't fucking buckle. You do the same thing that <laughs> right. I do. Who are only right. doing the extra. <laughs> yeah. yep. They're all doing the all extra. Dude, it was yep. it was the fucking real deal, man. Yeah, yeah. It was, the and real, it was it's horrifying. The, it's the real deal. You're like you're scared as shit because it's like then you're stuck in that fucking mode of like. I want to be, I have to, you have to be confident. So you're like, I'm the best in the fucking world. In the back of your head, you're like, am I? Am I? All right, am I? <laughs> Can I even hang with these guys? Did I, I work go out hard embarrass- enough? Is my knee going to fucking unravel? Yeah. Right. Am I going to go up there and just embarrass myself? I flew all the way to Australia to hit an opening yeah. squat, cough up blood, like, you know, or something and be done. Yeah. yeah, dude, there was a lot going through my head for that prep. And it was, it was scary. It was scary. We thought that, uh, we didn't know. We just didn't know. My, I squatted. 
I missed two squats that training cycle, two squat days because my knee was so fucked up yeah. that we couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So I think I squatted nine. Maybe 965 or 970 in training. I think you squatted a 975 in that. Okay. I think I was there for that. Yeah, and you, sm and you smoked it. Right, right, right. Yeah. So 975 I did in training. And in Australia, like, we knew it was going to be over 1,000 no matter what. It had to yeah. be just to compete with those guys. So, um, yeah, so now we're uh, we're going to Australia. We're going to Australia. I'm large, very You're large. fucking huge. What was your body weight when you... Like I was fluctuating from 355 to 365, and that just depends on what day of the week it was. I, you know how it goes with your training and um and with fluctuations from the drugs and yeah. like appetite being fucked up and not being all sleep. What was, was so the minimal? Heavy. What was the body weight you didn't want to go under? I didn't want to be above, below 350. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. yeah. But and I didn't want to go above 365. So yeah. I had like a 15 pound window to play with. Yeah. Because because you because you're trying to you're talking about your the your belly. Getting right. in the way. I couldn't if have my you're... belly too big, but I also couldn't be too light because then the squat and the bench wouldn't have been great. Right. Like you need that extra mass for so that. That big 10 squat. pound window right there is kind of where your body's the right shape, but you're heavy enough to be able to have the strength. Correct. And wow. that's like the peak pinnacle. 350 yeah. is like the pinnacle. It's like a razor's edge right there. You right, got right. fucking 10 pounds to yeah, work with. Right. And that number is probably even lower now because I'm in better shape. As you get in better shape and reduce the mass, like the fat, and then yep. have more mass, more muscle, you can probably do it even at a lower weight, even better. So, yeah, so we knew big dogs. I had to be big. And we also knew that, like, when I say we might do this, me and my wife, I, she's my team. We yeah. plan yep. everything together. No, we plan our yeah. food. We, we <laughs> yeah. do it all. She knows, like, oh, you got a training prep cycle going on. It's about to be hell for me, too. So, yeah. you know, we consult each other and all of it. Yeah. So we knew that I was going to blow up big, juice as hard as I fucking can. As long as. Like, no patience. Just a fucking asshole. Yeah, I'm just be like, miserable fuck. Like, big. Dude, that shit's hot. Like, just, you know, like, yep. <laughs> it is like. By nature, you yep. know, and that's that's part of the fucking game. It was like 2016 all over again without all the different compounds. I was no insulin or any of that crazy shit. I was just doing testosterone and DECA and um, no uh, no trend. That's what my life got way better when I stopped doing trend in 2016. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just testosterone and DECA, which uh, steak and potatoes and steroids. It's kind of like what everyone's first cycle is, what everyone kind of starts with. And uh, Derek White takes notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I knew that I knew we had to be big. We also knew that I couldn't be big for very long. So right after Australia, we knew we in my head we were going to lose weight, and then we do Kern later on, depending on how Australia went. Sure. So when we got to Australia, mind you, I took my I was like about three sixty when we flew out. I was so big that my hips. Like, they wouldn't fit in the seat. Now, everyone, everyone's big, oh, yeah, I didn't fit in the seat over here. No, 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 you're, you're not getting it. My hips sat on top of the fucking hips. The seat. arm rest. This is, so, so like, so dude, big. like, so you're a fucking competitor. I mean, you've been training, but your travel, dude, that's that's the hard part about the fucking, uh, the meat there. You have yep. to, and it's like a, fuck. how, how far of the flight 15 is and a half hours. Oh, 15 and a half hours. So how many days out early? So when you're an athlete and you're traveling for this kind of thing, you have to think about, okay, um, how early do I need to leave to get there? And acclimate. Acclimate, fucking balance down. So like for me, um, it's the same thing, like, cause flying makes me swell. So like, you know, how many mm -hmm. days ahead of a competition do I need to fucking land? Right. So that two, three days later, my body has adjusted and come back to normal. It's fucking wild. And you go, I yeah. went a week early. How yeah. many, how many, like, I'm just trying to think like the eating on a 15 hour flight, like how many hours What's your eating schedule? So we obviously right? loaded like, up right before we got there. The, the, we the flight attendants are like, do you want the fish or the chicken? They, 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 all of them. Yeah. They doubled yeah. me up. I got lucky. Yeah. They doubled me up. So <laughs> um, we brought snacks and food for everything. And then, uh, again, like they had an extra tray and the guy would come by who's gay. And he, I was looking pretty good, obviously. <laughs> and I was so <laughs> <smoking>. <laughs> That's how we met. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he was doubling me down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so he was hooking it up. Anyway, so that flight was the most miserable fucking flight, as you can imagine. Juice to the gills, just pouring sweat. I had to wear compression everything because you swell on a flight. So yeah. compression pants, compression socks, compression shirt underneath everything. This is, this is all important because this is what every, everybody wants to be the best. You right. Know? But this, these are the things that go into being the best. Yeah. You have you to don't be uncomfortable see. in so many different ways that you fucking can't even comprehend. That you're not even ready for. No. And that's why... That's what separates you from everybody else, oh, man. Yeah. And you, because you, you, you are tough enough to fuck, dude. It's fucking cool. And <laughs> what you did at this fucking meet is fucking cool. Yeah, like, it, like memorable, I'd say. Yeah, oh, fuck yeah, dude. You're one of the best in the world, right. you know. And you proved that in the world. It was so cool. 
but you had to suffer. Funny, funny you had story. To suffer so much for it. Right. Yeah. Funny story along with suffering about the flight over there. So, like I said, we're force feeding, and like I didn't fit in the seat. So, and the seats don't go up. It's an international flight, and my when we landed, my hips, both sides. I'm not kidding. We're black and blue. From being bruised from pressing the whole time. Well, and having fucking 350 pounds <laughs> pushing, pushing down it, right. on him. So, uh, anyways, midway th- or a little bit through the flight, a few hours in, I got to pee. You know, and this is an airplane, <laughs> like, small airplane bathroom. I don't care if it's international, they ain't big. And we knew there was no way I was going to be able to shit. So I had to hold my shit. <laughs> but I had to pee. So we, I'm like, I saw my baby go to the bathroom. And like, mind you, when you're that big, everything is an ordeal. It's like oh, having yeah. kids. You got to set shit down. Blah, blah, blah. And like, so, she got to come with me. Your thing is big. My thing is missing a leg. Flying is the same goddamn thing. Everything is a fucking ordeal. Right. Yep. It sucks when everything is an ordeal. So we, uh, I go into the bathroom, and when I, I get in the bathroom, and then I, I you know, I squeeze in there, and I, I close the door. Now I didn't like watch my my footing or anything. I, I got a size fifteen foot, so there's not a big foot, big everything. There's not room in there at all. <laughs> so the foot space in there, my feet are like, dude, I can't even explain to it. But I was literally touching wall to wall. <laughs> And my feet were like stuck against the things, all- and, and I'm like, "This is crazy." So I pee, and, my, and I'm peeing, and I fucking go to open the door. Just it's hit, it hit, runs, runs into my feet. But you're stuck. Oh, but he's claustrophobic, dude. So claustrophobic. <laughs> so I try to open it. I'm putting my feet to the side. I'm trying to get it open. Oh god, doors just rattling. I'm like, "Holy shit!" Freak out. So about to start I'm looking happening. at the hinges. I'm like, "What's the quietest way to rip this door off?" Like, that's where my head was at. I was like, I got to rip this fucking door off because this is... I was able to get it open enough to where I knew I can get my fucking hand in there. <laughs> and that's where my head was at. And then I looked at the toilet seat. And mind you, it's hard plastic. Uh-huh. So you can't stand on the toilet. But I'm like, if I can just lean my weight on there and get my feet out of the way, I can get the door open. And without falling through the septic fucking tank in the goddamn airplane, that would have really sucked. So we get it open and I come out. And I'm just dumping sweat. <laughs> White. And Jane's like, hey, what, what the hell? She's like, when the door, the whole thing's rattling. It's happening. I was like, I'm fucking stuck in there, Jenny. And so Jenny's like, oh my God. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, like, I go to, back to my seat. Jenny says I peed all over the floor and everywhere. I was like, I was panicking. I don't know. I was freaking out. <laughs> So, uh, completely yeah. missed the toilet. So, yeah, I just didn't even, not even think I was looking. You know, my belly was so big. Yeah. I was trying to find that little. Like, I think it's in like, this. Hey, where's that fucking flight attendant at? <laughs> Wait, come yeah. back here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, go back to my seat, and then uh, Jenny comes out. She's like, "You fucking peed all over the floor." But Peter comes. <laughs> I was like, "I'm oh, sorry." So um, that happened, and then um, the ne- any time I went pee after that, I just kept the door open. I was like, I'm on the close. airplane. Yep. Oh no shit. Yeah. Because yeah. I peed two or three yeah. more times, and I was just like, "Hey." Yeah. Being here, but I'm not closing that fucking door. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, so that sucked. Then we get to Australia. So humid. And I'm at the carrier at my back. We're there for two weeks. So we got a ton of luggage. And I carried two bags. Bro, we're going through TSA, through checkpoints, everything. And, like, um, the fucking dog, the service dog, that goes around checking by bags. I kid you not, my wife was even about me. That dog avoided the fuck out of me. No shit. Oh, dude. He was no, like this it, but, big, stinky oh, but, bastard. But for, um, and I'm actually going to ditch you guys and take a pee break, but you had to find, when you travel to Australia, you got to find. Uh, oh, gear. Yeah. Yeah. So you, <laughs> yeah. you can't. Well, you go pee real quick. Let me see. Make sure there's nothing going on. We're taking there. a pee break. Hey guys, wanted to take a minute and let you know that today's episode of Savage Saturdays here on the Drinking Bros Podcast is sponsored by Raycon. Everyone needs a great pair of wireless earbuds, but before you go dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair, you need to check out the wireless earbuds from Raycon. Now, a lot of you who have been tuning into the main Drinking Bros Podcast have already heard about Raycon earbuds, and you already know they start about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, and that they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands you know. If this is your first time hearing about Raycon, their newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds are their best ones yet. With six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice, noise-isolating fit. When I say compact, I mean compact. I started using the Raycon E25 earbuds a few months ago, and I was skeptical. I have really odd-shaped ears. Earbuds have always been very hit or miss with me as to whether or not they would stay in. I absolutely hate having to adjust earbuds during a workout. I've made my situation worse by adding inch gauges to my already odd-shaped ears in a feeble attempt to look cool. The E25s worked flawlessly. I've used them while pumping out calories on a skier during burpees, and I took them for a test. 20 unbroken bar muscle-ups. That's a lot of whipping around, and I had no issues with the earbuds falling out of place. Unlike some other wireless option, Raycon earbuds are both stylish and discreet. 
with no dangling wires or stems. Now's the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash Saturdays. That's buyraycon.com slash Saturdays. Thank you. Now back to the show. All right, we're back from our pee break. Um, and we are, so so. Um, you survived your flight. Survived the flight. And you get in town in Australia. Where was the meet at exactly? I've never been to Australia. I want to fucking go. Maybe but you not. weren't there on vacation. I don't think you want to go. <laughs> you, well, you weren't there on vacation. I don't think you want to go there on vacation. You Eric. were there for work. I don't know. Maybe I'll, the I'll, summer. I'll dr- it, Like vacation for me is anywhere where I can drink and I have no responsibilities. I can fucking vacay. Right, but you can yeah. do Australia in Hawaii for a six-hour flight. Yeah. Well, we went to Hawaii. Like, for the, so Stacy's big thing is she wants to go to a new... Um, country every year, things like that. It's been sort of on hold with the twins. She went to Brazil this year, which was cool. I'm definitely not down for country hopping. I like, I like, I want to travel too, but um, do. Yeah, but it's so, not for me. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's not like, for me. When you're, when you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're big guy. Yeah, Especially so, when you're that large. So you make it. You, you survive the flight. You get into Australia, and you were kind of like around your competition. Correct. And so, every, everybody's friends, but right. Also, you're fucking. You're there in fucking game on mode. We're there everybody to make some is your, money. Everybody, like you're, you're there. You're yeah. And what was the prize pool for? Twenty two grand. That, that's a good fucking payday. You fucking make twenty two thousand dollars in one fucking day, and everything that leads up like six. You put six months of. But it's it's not even about the money, right? No, it's hell about, no. Like the money the is pride. nice, but the money it's is the, the money's in your head. Right. But it's the like so th- this is big dogs mm-hmm. biggest total strongest motherfucker in the fucking world that's 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 what's at stake strongest fucking guy in the world and and so you get and so you're around your competition for a few days they put us in the same hotels yeah same and, rooms, every, like right next to each other. and you guys are trying to be friendly and things like that but you're also you're out to fucking kill and i think competitors need to know that oh yeah and, and, you know so it's like so i have rush club coming up in november and i'm friends with uh, marcus hayward and we're friends and he's a fucking he was in the army and he lost his leg i have i have nothing but respect for this guy but when it comes to competition it's like hey man All right, I'm, I'm taking I'm there this to one fucking right, i'm, I'm not just i'm not just, i'm not just there to win i'm, I'm it's like i'm like i want to fucking dominate Right. And dominating means embarrassing you, and I'm s- not even sorry for that. Right. <laughs> you know? And so you got to be around your competition. What's that, what's that like? So, was it intimidating? Or So I got there the earliest, and then right after me was Peter Petras, which uh, he came from the Czech Republic, and uh, he's who actually ended up winning. And Peter is a mammoth, 6'3", 380, 390 pounds, yeah. bodybuilder as yeah, well. Yeah, you actually posted a picture yesterday or today. Yes, just the other day. Next to yep. Peter, Peter and, and o- Odell Manuel. We were at the podium. They're fucking huge. M- mammoth. And you're fucking huge. You're the biggest guy I've ever been next and to. And I was the smallest one there. I, know, like, yeah. <laughs> I was the smallest guy <laughs> there. You fucking dwarfed him, <laughs> man. Dwarfed like, yeah. <laughs> so when I first meet Peter, mind you, <laughs> Peter, like, he doesn't speak English. So he has a buddy with him that translates speaks English. And um, he's, you know, Czech Republic. And, uh, you know, it's a different world, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, him winning $22,000 is a year's salary, okay? Oh, wow. Right. So it's it's even a bigger deal for him, you know, his oh, fiance yeah. and everything that were out there. And then but, here in America, it's like, oh, that'll get me through two months. Right, okay, Got yeah, a couple dirt bikes. Right, for a few oh, weeks. All right, no, uh, so, <laughs> and then I, I also know how all of us big guys are. Like, unless they go out drinking, you you don't get challenged, you know what I mean, when you're a big guy like that, because they're never in a situation to get challenged, and why the hell is someone going to pick that mammoth challenge? Yeah. So... You know, when I see Peter, Peter's a very intimidating fucking dude, too. And I'm like, I know this guy hasn't been fucked with in a, in a very long time, 20 years at least. So I'm on fucking social media. I'm like, because, you know, you got to get following. I know there's got to be some Czech motherfuckers that are following. I'm like, how do you, I'm like, I need someone that speaks Czech that can, or whatever the fuck they speak in Czech Republic, yeah. that can translate some shit for me. So some guy who was going to Australia to support, just as a fan of Peter, was like, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he taught you fucking. Yeah, so I was like, "How yeah. do you say I'm I'm the daddy I'm in not. Czech Republic?" Because <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. like, "That's got to be something he's never been fucking told, especially by another man." You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> so he teaches me how to say it. So I'm like Facetiming him, rehearsing how to say it, right? Because I want to say it proper and I want to shock this motherfucker, right? So we're getting ready. So uh, <laughs> we're in this little hotel room, or yeah, hotel room together. Like well, not the same room, but same hotel room. And then we're getting picked up by the gym owner, you know, who's going to come pick us up and take us to the gym just to do a meet and greet with the locals because we're yeah. there early. Sure. And um, 
So they come to pick us up, and Peter, you know, without hesitation, goes to get in the front seat. And I was like, oh, hell no. So as we're both walking, mind you, he's way bigger than me, too, and everything. You both so as we're both walking, door. he goes to the front door, and I fucking, like, I knew he was going to, so I, I brought the heat, you know, aggressively. Like, like, and I went, tia stupa, whatever the fuck the word, I don't even remember how to yeah. say. But I, Chupa me al right. culo. Chupa me al culo. So I tell him, I'm the daddy. <laughs> yeah. And Chuck Roman, he's like, oh, oh. oh. He looks at his trailer, he's like, oh. Like, yeah. It was the biggest yeah. shock ever. I was like, yes. <laughs> So he gets in the back behind me, and I'm looking at him in the rear view. He's like, <laughs> and I was like, I know he's never been told yeah. that before. So he, then he realized what kind of guy I am. You know what I mean? I'm just a bullshitter. You know, yeah. So then we had fun with each other the rest of the trip. And um, <laughs> and then as all the other guys started coming in, we all we all kind of broed up at the gym to do the meet and greets and see each other at hotels. But I don't want to go eat with you. There's I don't, a, there's a mutual know. respect, but Total. you're there to fucking whoop that ass yep. you're there to fucking whoop, yep. like hey man we're friends it's a weird it's as a much weird... as i don't want him to fall down the stairs right now i know if he did it would be a lot easier day for me <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a weird dynamic to carry is like hey we're a hey, like we're friends i respect the shit out of you but for the next fucking 72 hours you're my fucking enemy right. and i'm gonna take that hill you know right. so, i don't want him to know what i was eating i don't want to yeah. give anyone tips i don't want anyone That's to know the, anyone. dude I, I i share my training quite often and 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 i start a, a a training program september 1st for this competition november 14th i'm gonna stop sharing my training it's you know it's personal yeah it's, it's so that's cool so like um day of the big dogs day of the big dogs i was ready to go home no sh what I'm just so nervous really so well dude that that's the fucking that's that's the fucking. That's the juice. That's the champion. Yeah, exactly. Every champion yeah. is fucking scared. That's the funny thing is everybody's scared as shit, man. Tyson everybody's says scared as shit. Tyson's yeah. So I I think I I want to highlight that because um, people are scared of shit of losing fifty pounds. Where me uh, you are scared of being a world champion, strongest man in the world. But it's the same goddamn feeling yep. as somebody who's trying to lose fifty pounds. You're just scared. Yep. And and how do you overcome that? You just ride it out. Do it. You just ride. You just it know out. it's gonna be uncomfortable. And Fuck, and you're then, not gonna be happy you when it comes do it. To get, so so just so everybody knows um you're in australia i'm here at home and we're watching on the fucking stream we're watching the stream and uh so that that event i can't remember what your numbers were so um just so, you know, talk yeah. to us about the day yeah so it was uh it was an amazing day so mind you i had all my drugs already out there yeah because i wasn't australia has some of the strictest customs in the world so i wasn't gonna fuck with that but they, they take care of you there at Big Dogs? Yeah. I found a guy. <laughs> they have like their meat coordinator, their fucking video guy, and then they got their guy, they got their supplier. They got Stan Let's just put it this way. We yeah. all know Patrick out yeah. in fucking Australia. Right. Okay. He might be listening to this. Hey, Pat. Shout out to Pat. You're a Any leader. competitor yeah. in fucking Australia yeah. knows Patrick. I There's promise raspberry that. raspberry white claws for you. <laughs> I'll yeah. fucking take one down for that, too. <laughs> So yeah, thanks, so, Pat. Yeah. yeah, so gear was waiting for me, weed was waiting for me. Yeah, some ecstasy was waiting for me for after. No oh, shit. Yeah. Party, we're going to Australia. Yeah, yeah. So um, the whole like the week that we're there, I'm just locking myself in the bathroom throughout the day, smoking weed. I don't talk to people when I'm about to compete. I'm yeah. very like it's a couple texts and then I'm I'm no, intro when it's, like, when it's just, game time, man. It's fucking Jenny game time. knows. Jenny thing. just knocks. Yeah. I'm not kidding when I tell you I locked myself in the bathroom for almost the whole day every day, and I just had the shower on hot. I want steam and I have towels on the door. So I'm almost like sitting in a steam room, but I'm still drinking water and eating food. Like I'm not trying to lose. I don't know why, but yeah. it just gets me in the right state of mind. Dude, so no, it's, it's the same. So it makes me think of, um, so I, I, in my competitions are different. There's no grand stage of what you did. But when I, when I, when I, uh, rush club in, I think it was the same year. It must've been 2018. Yeah. You were there. Yeah. Like we support each other, yeah. but, um, that was like, so it, that was in Arizona and the day of like, we, we drove out two days before and the day of my competition, um, you know, like prior to that I was socializing and things like that. But the day of the competition, it was just well known. And we had an Airbnb and my, my friends and family were there. We had probably like, uh, 10 or 12 people in the house. Everybody left me alone. And it was just like, don't fucking bother, Derek. Everybody's kind of like, hey, what do you need? Right. I was like, no, nah, I don't need nothing. Leave me alone. You know, like, leave me alone. I just need Because I'm in my fucking head. Yeah. yeah. I like, you know, do you watch the show Vikings? I, I, I want to start. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So when, when Ragnar, before he fucking, mm -hmm. before he becomes Earl, before he kills the guy, he just goes up on the mountaintop. Yep. And they're like, what's he doing? He's like, he's preparing. He's getting he ready. He's got to prepare mentally. Yep. It's such a big, like, dude, like, physically, 
the the physical part of it all is is not that hard. anybody well it, it's hard but any a, like a lot of people can do it the mental part right. you gotta fucking Forming on meat you day. gotta fucking prep yourself I you would gotta, just visualize gotta, it from yeah. from when it was gonna feel like grabbing the bar yeah to how it was gonna hurt my neck I know to this walkout yeah I would visualize it, it over and over and over I'm like you're not gonna make a mistake this is what you're gonna do this 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 so important visualiza- visualization visualization yep. you know um, Stacy we talked about the happiness lab. They, talk, yeah. they had a whole episode about visualization and, and how it's like um, those are kind of negative emotions, but they prep you. Yeah. So like by the time by the, by the time you and I um, come to our competition, we've already done that competition a thousand times. Done every scenario. In our head. I've already tripped on the walkout. I've and already if, done this. I've already missed yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. And it but it but it's 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 a mind control thing. You have to control yourself. And not let it run ramp run rampant where you're just like I'm gonna fail I'm gonna fail I'm gonna fail I'm so scared I'm so scared no you see yourself winning right yeah yeah and when you yeah. visualize it it's it's so glory. Like when you tell me the story of you fucking doing your mental prep in the yeah. bathroom I'm like fuck yeah man I do that same thing and you have to have to and I'm going to and I have a you know like my competition is November fourteenth I just I just I, I get a little emotional too I don't know if you do but I like get worked up and I'll yeah. start getting like stuttering and a little crying huge and oh it's just, dude, I'm huge. like man there's so much on the line like it's yeah yeah. No, this is everything. This is, I don't, and what makes us who we are? I don't know. I don't fucking know, man. We put all the pressure on ourselves. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. All right, we do it to ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. So, uh, the meet, meet day, that was, dude, I, I, leading up the beginning of the meet, the morning of, couldn't tell you. It would, I would just be guessing as to what happened. Yeah. But if I could give you an, an honest guess, I'd imagine I woke up early and I started drinking and eating everything I possibly can, force feeding, force drinking water and everything, yeah. bloating up most I can. Probably smoked much weed. Yeah. And then um, I remember being there at the event. Now, I don't remember parking or any of that kind of shit. I just yeah. remember being there. And then we're in the back. And, like, um, mind you, like, Eric Lillybridge is someone who I've always looked up to. And we've always been real close to one yeah. another. He's and always he's been stronger. American. He's American. from. But he's from Australia now. Well, he lives in Australia now, but he's from oh, no Chicago. Shit. Okay, yeah. So mm-hmm. I, yeah. me and Sean Dwell were the only Americans there. Okay. Well, Eric's technically an American, but he's been living in Australia for nine months at the time. He still oh, okay. lives there for several yeah. years now. Okay. So um, you, you say mate and everything. Yeah. So full, full, full <laughs> hey, Aussie. Hey, mate. All right. <laughs> Chuck us a jug of water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like so excited to be competing with Eric, Odell, Peter, you know, yeah. all these fucking mutants, Sean Doyle, you know, all these guys. Yeah. And I just uh, whooped Sean's ass and uh, Kern a little bit before. So it was nice talking shit to him, yeah. you know, out there. That anyway, Odell guy was looking big that day. He won the next year. So <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, Odell's a mammoth. Odell's a, a, a very well-known rugby player who transferred into uh, powerlifting like 10 years ago or so. So he, he's from New Zealand. Uh, Maybe Australia. I, I know they really don't like that. Yeah, so okay. yeah, I mean, it's just no, <laughs> no disrespect. We right. just we just we didn't do our research. When I was out there, I would yeah. fuck with them and be like, oh, I yeah. thought that in Australia, New Zealand is the same place. They'd be like, what would you say? Yeah. We're not yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right. So um yeah, I remember so we're in the back and um we each have our own it's two guys per mono, but we all had there's like we had spotters and loaders. We had just our own monolift to warm up on. Mind you, uh, in powerlifting, for those that aren't powerlifting fans, a monolift is in a, a device to where when you go to squat, you just stand up and the device moves. You squat and then it comes and grabs it. Me. Yeah, this being, was important because this motherfucker. Me being the hardhead American that I am, yeah. we walk our fucking shit out. <laughs> yeah. And I and, it's, and even though the mono, you can get 50 to 100. I, I don't know because I don't use it, but guys say they get quite a bit of weight out of it because they're not walking out. It takes away the hard, hardest part of the squat. So walking, walking out, out means, so like, so the, do you know what a monolift is? No. Yeah. So a monolift is like, so it's a machine and you get under the barbell and you stand up and yep. a monolift, uh, the rack moves. And oh. So you can squat right there in Without place. You have to move your feet. Right. Right. So, but uh, Brandon, um, and, and well, they say that you here, can't squat that kind of weight without with when with walking it out. And I was like, yeah, you can. So a walkout means right, so a walkout means you unrack it and then you take your steps yeah. back to clear the rack, like typically, but yep. a mono lift moves for um it. yeah, moose so the mono lift, those guys just stand up, the rack moves for them and they squat in place. You can take, okay. way, more, you can take way more weight yeah. when you're not walking out, yeah. losing your energy, losing tightness. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And it, it like what you know, so like Well like for you and your when yeah. your leg wasn't fitting right and you were sure, having to but do like, that. But yeah. like fucking that's that's pennies, man. These guys are fucking walking out. No, 
not these guys. Brandon is walking out a thousand pounds at this meet. When everybody else, when it's within the rules, it's it's perfectly acceptable to just monolift. And they told me they were they they were encouraging me to use the monolift. They yeah. were pushing for. They're it. like you're right. a fucking was, idiot, but he's like, oh, no, I, was like, I got I integrity know. and respect, right. dog. In America, we walk our squats. Yeah, out. we don't do this. I don't <laughs> want to. I don't want to break that record and then be like, well, the guy before me walked it out, but I yeah. used the mono. No, that means you didn't fucking no, earn that record. Yeah. So that's where my head was at. So they're they're trying to convince me to use the mono. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm no. gonna walk it out. Yeah. So then, like when I'm warming up, um, they wanted to come back to choreograph how I walk out in the spot. I'm like, guys, don't worry, I, yeah. I, I got it. You know, like, yeah. we're gonna be fine. You know, I walk out every fucking day. We're gonna be okay. Yep. So I'm in the back, and um, Eric doesn't like to be bothered when he's warming up. So I got 101 questions. Cause I'm not, I'm not trying to let him get in his headspace and you know, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's the fucking yeah. dick move. Yeah, man. You that's have to though. You have to like, you only play the friend. Right, right. So, um, <laughs> and then, you know, I, I'm just, just so struck to be with these guys and just so excited. But either way, I'm, I'm like a little kid just chattering and talking shit. These guys are rapping their knees with, you know, they're rap squatters. So they do, but I'm a raw squatter. I'm not a rap squatter. I just am a raw squatter that happened to do a rap meet. Cause that's where the big money was. And I wanted to be a part of the big stage. So, you know, I'm squat, I'm squatting 800 pounds in the back, still in sleeves, walking out. These guys are wrapping their knees at 500 pounds and shit like that. So. Oh, no shit. So that they, they wrap for the fucking warm-ups, too, and Correct. things like that. And the wraps, dude, the, the wraps, they're not just protective. They're... Rebound. They, they give you, they assist, give you a like, huge yeah. rebound. Oh, I've yeah. never wrapped. I, oh, I, yeah. I just didn't... I don't know what that feels like. It, it's... It, uh, it's a feeling you have to get used to, but it does help. Correct. So, oh, yeah. Okay, it's yeah. going to add... 30 to 100 pounds, depending on the lifter. Okay. Yeah. Um, everyone's a little different, depending on how tight they go and everything like that. Um, I don't get too much out of a wrap just because I, I have my wife wrap me. We wrap real soft. Mind you, um, when, uh, so when I was squatting 1,008, I probably could have done a 970 squat raw. So yeah. we're talking very little out of the wrap. So it's mostly protective for you. Yeah. yeah. And, and just, well, it's going to give me a little something, right? Like yeah. I just said. So I'm definitely going to use it. Good news. Yeah, Shot so of the I'm hole. Definitely yeah. going to take. I'm not going to go out there in sleeves, yeah. you know. So, uh, yeah, so we're uh, getting ready for the squad, and uh, it's so surreal. Dude, they don't fuck around in Australia. The meets, you're uh, like you're a celebrity. They take care of you. It's like how it should be. And, you know, everyone's catering to you, and it, it's just awesome. There's a little drama in the back with uh, Peter taking too long, and then Eric getting pissed, and me and Odell were like, yeah, like, let these guys get mad at each other. Because <laughs> we're, right, we're all neck and neck, neck you know? and eat each right, other. Right, right, right. So, and then Peter dumped us for a squat. And then I was obviously strength wise most concerned with Peter. So when that happened, I was like, I got this. Hello. And then yeah. Peter comes back and says, next one, no problem. So yeah. Nothing. But, uh, yeah. Oh and, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I still didn't even have it <laughs> but still. So, um, drama with the squat. Um, but again, uh, my, uh, I hit 975 on my second and just <laughs> smoked yeah. it. So 1008 was my third. And then I, even in the back, they were trying to tell me like, don't walk it out. Use the mono. Don't walk it out. I was like, Fuck that shit. So you, so that was your, was that your biggest lift or your biggest squat all time? 1,008 pounds, dude. Dude, 1,008. I think it's like 457 and a half kilograms or something like that. Yeah. I can't like, even wrap my head around 1, that. 1,008 pounds. You know what it felt like? And you, sm but what like, did it? 1,008 pounds. Right? <laughs> yeah. It fucking hurt. But you smoked hurt. it because I was here in my chair and I think I had my leg off, but I still stood up on my, <laughs> one, on my one stupid fucking leg because I was watching the stream. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, you know, it's so fucking cool. And uh, the uh, fucking goddamn announcer for that meet. Wild you know, man, Brandon yeah, Allen. Uh, on a filthy power, <laughs> Las Vegas, is he's got his friend back home, Derek Wielda. <laughs> that's, how, that's how this guy said my name. Like, he's a, he's giving me a shout out right. on this stream. And I was like, fuck yeah. But he's like, Derek. I was like, yeah, Wielda. Right. Could have like, just fucked up with Wieda. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just, just say Derek Wieda. But so 1,008, yeah. Which so. actually wasn't the highest squat in the day. Odell came and chipped me. He took the next step above me. He was he, he's a very Odell, Odell's a very smart lifter. Yeah, and he knew he can out deadlift me. Um, and but he knew that squat we're gonna be neck and neck and bench. We would have been neck and neck. So yeah. he knew he had to get a little more of me in the squat, which would have made me force a bigger deadlift. Really? Which so he went he went like the jump above me, yeah. and he got it. Which I definitely had the strength for that, but he went last, so he got me. I was like, oh, how, how big of a jump is it between like two and a half kilograms, dude? The level okay. you have to be at 
like strength wise to play mind games oh, with without, other right. lifters. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. When you guys are playing chess at a fucking level we can we can't even comprehend. Right. Yeah. So Yeah, a lot of yeah. a lot of crazy shit happening with the numbers, but it's awesome. It's so much fun. I'm yeah. thinking about it, I get excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Adele chipped me on the squat. I was like, oh, that little motherfucker. So now, like, bench, I know we're going to be neck and neck, and we'll come down to do this, and we'll be okay. And um, and still, I'm still looking at Peter. I'm still looking at Eric. I'm still looking at Sean Doyle. Trust me, these guys are not out of it. You know what I mean? Everyone's still in it, you know? And uh, Dylan Hellraiser, you know, like, don't, like, I, how did I not mention Dylan? But, uh, yeah, it was, it was fucking awesome. So I just hit my squat. I go to the back. And then everyone that squats a thousand pounds, they have a golden monolift. Everyone signs it. Anyone that squat over a thousand, so I gotta go back there and sign it. Oh no, it. shit! So yep. that's something that we didn't know, or we didn't see on the stream right. there. Can you claw me, please? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I hit the. Uh, so you got to sign. I sign it, and then pounds. they're like, hey, "Nice job, man! Yeah. Dude, thousand pounds! What the fuck, right? dude? Raw One thousand and raw. eight pounds walked out raw." So then they uh, <laughs> come back, and then he's like, "They want me to give a speech, <laughs> you know?" And like, mind you, I'm in Australia, and I'm uh, there's. Locals there, and uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Australians, but I'm pretty sure I was the favorite. Uh, they were going wild for me, and it was yeah. pretty fucking surreal. It was pretty yeah. cool. Well, you're, I, you were giving the finger pistols at the time. That was for the deadlifts. <laughs> yeah. But I was I was also like probably the most active on social media out of all these guys. Eric's okay. probably bigger than me, but you know, you know. So again, there's that. So they want me to give a speech. So I come out there. I, I'm in Australia. This is all Aussies, and then they're like, Oh yeah. So we just think about that squat, dude. I was like. Yeah, well, you know, everyone over here is using monolith, and uh, you know, in America, we walk it out. So yeah. I was gonna do it true to that. It was like, oh, yeah. You know? and yeah. So, and I, I don't even know what I said. You know, the rest the of the speech. Way. Yeah, that, that's true, man. Every everybody else used the monolith in this meet because if you if you can, why not? Yeah, it's like cross. That's gonna give you weight. Like butterfly pull. Look at look at look at the numbers, Derek. I would. Yeah. In theory, I would have won the meet. Wow. Well, <laughs> yeah. So, but you're a stubborn piece of shit. Yep. And As you it got be. and you got in your own way. <laughs> I got my own way. <laughs> <Yeah>. But in, <laughs> but integrity matters, and we respect the Fuck shit yeah. out of you here in America. So I yeah. give my speech, you know, take a little jabs, and I feel good. I walk to the back, and they're like, "Okay, 15 minutes." So we're you know in a traditional meet. There's other flights, and there's other people I got to go. Yeah. There's a lot of time you got to eat and everything like that. It's only us. Yeah. And everyone's watching online. Yeah. So, so this isn't structured well for a super heavyweight event a super heavyweight event should take eight hours yeah so this actually, took three and a half so oh, to wow. explain that it's you know um at a regular meet um or when you when you lift this kind of way you fucking crash your cns uh, your central nervous system and so it's not just a muscular thing it's not just a mental thing your central nervous system is fucking tense, firing literally you know and so know. you have time to in a regular meet you have fucking like he like like Brandon said, other flights. You have forty five minutes to an hour, yep. and sometimes that feels like a fucking burden. Yep. But you have you have time to eat, you have time to drink, and you have to re repair and, and fucking. But but you were just like bang bang bang. So it, well, put it fucking out. So I right? hit the squat. I then I decide the mono. Then I give the speech while everyone else is chilling. Yeah, but I'm moving around. Which yeah. again, what the fuck does that mean? But again, I'm moving around. Right, and then I come back no, like 15 minutes. It means minutes. a lot. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I think they say 15 minutes, as in we have 15 minutes to start warming up to bench press. No, no, no. It was 15 minutes before the bench press flight, flight starts. Oh, so I'm not prepared for this kind of speed. Neither is Sean Doyle. I don't think any of us were. Yeah. So me and Sean are like, holy shit, 15 minutes. So we hop on the bench and we're just going red, 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 which is we're talking about kilos. So we're talking about 110 pound jumps. Yeah, all the way till. Mind you, we're opening up with over 500 pounds. So you got to hit them, hit them. And my elbows from squatting, low bar squatting, were so fucked and so wrecked. Um, just the one plate. I was like, oh, I was like, oh my god. Yeah. I was like, I need an hour to let the ibuprofen kick in. Yeah, but um, no, we didn't get an hour. So we warm up, we warm up, and we're. You can't underplay the fucking pain that low bar squatting puts your elbows in. You can't. Un- you can't you, it. You, like it, it just it's the worst, man. It is the worst. The, like there's the, screws that in just because you know, it, and, and you can show up. So like, if you're in prep, if you're in training or something like that, you can show up with the most positive mindset. And then once that fucking pain, arm pain kicks pain, in, it just brain. so like you had that at the meet. At the meet. And Long, you just have to up. O- oh, overcome yeah. it. No shit. Fuck, so, dude. So I'm you're, like, you're a hard motherfucker, dude. <laughs> Jesus, fuck yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm thinking like, man, like, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do this. But like, I'm not, what am I going to do? Like, I have to bench. Like, pro- I need to bench around 570 to have a chance on the deadlifts. Because I know what these guys are going to bench. I know what these guys are going to pull. Yeah. So I got to fucking, I got up these numbers. And I, I was, we 
we were, if everything, if all the stars aligned, the 600 pounds was there. If the stars didn't align, it was going to be 589 again, which that, I was. That was your goal was 600 at this yep, meet. But I okay. was, but I was more than likely going to go for 589 just because okay. I knew I needed to get it. Yeah. So I was already preparing my head numbers like that. So my opener was 525 or 530, I don't know, something. It was just boop, but the pain was just so fucked. I get to the side, and Jenny instantly, right when I come to the side, Jenny's rubbing my fucking arm as hard as she can to try to get blood moving. Is she hyping you up? And yeah, yeah, like yeah. Every, just everyone saying, is. Yeah. Mind, I hit my opening yeah. squat and I, or my opening bench, and I look up at everyone, and I rub my giant belly. I'm like, ooh. Yeah. Everyone's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> They're all dying laughing. Yeah. And I go off, and then my second attempt was 567, and it – just pinned me. I my elbows just weren't there. My CNS, I just wasn't there mentally. I unrack it. I come down. I was confident that I was gonna get it. So I'm already thinking, do I need to go to 600? Like I'm, like I'm that excited. So I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm gonna get 600. Whoa, 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 wait, maybe I'm not. Actually, this is 567. You're right. You need to focus. Closing down on my yep. fucking chest right now. So that yeah. stapled me. We get it off me. We go back to rack. And I mean, did you way, hit that? Did you hit five sixty seven? Was it good? I I missed that one. Okay, that one yeah. Me. So in my head, I'm like, damn, like I think I need to go five seventy nine. Then, like, I, I just I got to do a jump. But I also know I have no chance with five thirty or five twenty five, whatever my open was. I know I have no chance of winning. So I need to get this third one. So I was like, retake. So I retook the five sixty seven, and in hindsight, should have went up because that was. You smoked it the like, second oh, time. But yeah. again, whatever. It is what it is. We are on the board still. Yep. So now we know we got to push the deadlift probably a little further than what I'm capable of. But again, I'm there to win. So yeah, we're going to fucking cool, send this This bitch. is a cool story about the fucking heart of a champion right yeah, here. Yeah. So the we, deadlifts, uh, the deadlifts are very cool. It's a very cool story. Like, like, dude, like, so he's living it, but I'm, I'm I was here watching it at home. And I think, so this was late. It was late 2018. Stacy was pregnant. We were both here watching it, and Stacy was here with me. We were fucking super excited. Oh, yeah. So I'm reliving this. Right. Uh, just, like, from spectators on our shitty fucking couch at our, sh you know. Right. We're like, yeah. And when you fail, we're like, right. oh, God damn it. <laughs> like, we were so excited. Yeah. So. so then we move on to deads. And then now I know Odell can pull more than me. And I know that's a problem. And I know Peter is going to be close. And uh, I know Eric's got a huge deadlift, but Eric... Uh, tends to drop. So them. where are you sitting going into the deadlifts? I believe I was probably in fourth. Yeah. So okay. I was towards the top, but not up there. But we also knew that um, that was because of that shitty bench, and I was barely there. Like it was like we were all so close. It was just going to be who's going to his drop it shitty off. bench at five hundred and sixty seven right? pounds. <laughs> Garbage. So fucking shitty. But these are the best in the world. You know. So we we're, we put our numbers and we're ready to go and we're <laughs> we will never hit this in our life. Like garbage. Me plus you can't equal this. Right? No. <laughs> it was shitty, man. Yeah, uh, it was. Fuck. <laughs> so Odell comes out and he opens up with eight eighty one, four hundred kilo. Which so at the time I'm like he's gonna he was, he was making a statement. Right? I thought he was like, like what's he got his? he got nine fifty? What the fuck are we talking? about? He's opening yeah. eight eighty one, and um. And uh, so he goes last because he's got the biggest opener, which Odell is very smart. He's a gamer. He The highest number goes last. Then you get to see what everyone else does. Oh, yeah. So you get to know what you got to do again. Yep. So that was his plan, which is a very smart plan because he knew he had a pull to win. Fucking chess involved in power thing. I love yep. it. But these guys are fucking playing games with. The strongest and other people lifts. don't know. That's why yeah. powerlifting sucks as a spectator sport because you don't have the you don't have the knowledge of someone telling everyone what's going on. That's why I feel like if powerlifting ever made it to a, a proper audience, like being on sports, I would love to commentate for it because I know I can I was, tell. Like, look at what these guys are doing. This is what's happening. I was just yeah. thinking, it's like when MMA has an announcer who actually was a fighter, and the right. guy's just like, "Hey, this may just yeah. look like they're rolling around right now, but." Like there's some jujitsu right. happening right totally. now. Totally. Well, like yeah, like Joe Rogan, he talks about things that very intermediate people don't know what's going on. Yeah. He's talking about jujitsu. If he was yeah. talking to high ranked people, he wouldn't be saying, right? Oh, he's transitioning to an. You know what I mean? Like, so I feel like I could bring that. And, ev you know? and yeah. everybody at this meet is a fucking competitor. So we so, all know pretty much, right? Like yeah. they like the physical thing. Every, like everybody's trying to mind fuck right. everybody. Yep. So it all I hits love it. it. I love my because like I love mind fucking people. Oh yeah, I love it. You know, so it all like hits sorcery. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> that pound for pound shit. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So Odell hits the 881. Now he's ahead of all of us. But That's a massive deadlift. Right, yeah. By the way, but 881 I, pounds. He didn't yeah. have he 
didn't have anything else. Um, and like, okay, so he hurt his hamstring on that 881. Okay. But even if he didn't, it didn't move like there was much more. So it, regard, I know that he did that on purpose to shock all so he, he kind of like showed his hand. Yeah, he hit. Well, he yeah, hit the 81. Yeah. Then it was kind of like see what everyone else did to do to know what he needs to do to win. But he hurt his hamstring on that 881. Yeah. So now Odell technically is in the lead, but I know he doesn't have a second or third lift. So we know what his numbers were. And then um, it was, you know, it was put up a shut up basically to win. And um, I hit my opener. Peter hits his. We're still neck and neck. Odell's still much ahead of us. Eric is still right there. I think we kind of got it pretty much. I think we might have might have been a bit out of reach for the other guys at this point. It was between us four. And then um, and then uh, it comes down to, you know, I hit my second deadlift, which was 855. And uh, I was... Just below Odell there, like by like ten pounds mm-hmm. on his total. Yeah. And Peter had a gap on me. So there's no winning in this meet. Or there's no tying. It's winning only. Like yeah. there's no nothing. So Peter's gap so mind you, at this time no one had ever squatted a thousand and pulled nine hundred raw in a meet. And that was I wanted I needed to do that. And I knew this going into yeah, like so, that, that was kind of your goal yep. going into So I already this. hit the yeah. thousand. Mind you, I I was I didn't think I was ready for the 900 deadlift. We, I knew 881 was there. Like I fucking knew that was so, there. Just like the importance of this is like, can somebody hit a thousand pound squat on one day? Yeah, sure. And then you know, like a week later, do a 900 pound right. deadlift. Yeah, sure. But can you do a fucking? And this was in within like three or four hours. Yeah, within three, a half like, hour, fifteen minutes rest snap, between that like, and the bench. One thousand then... pound squat. And then you bench fucking goddamn near 600 pounds right. and then fucking deadlift 900 pounds. How this much, is, how much time was between the bench and the... From start of the meet to finish of the meet, three and a half hours. So yeah, we're talking dude, less than is, an hour. This is this is, this is how yeah. impressive this is. Still out of breath. We can't understate this. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> so his, but his goal going into it was like the thousand and nine thing. Well, okay, that was, that was a secondary goal. My goal was to win. Sh- yeah, sure. Sorry. Right. And I, I know that's like a lifetime goal of yours right, or something. Right. Well, it yeah, was just but, my, my yeah. first goal was to win. Yep. Sure. And then the second goal was if if I had a chance at the thousand nine hundred, we're we're yeah. going for that shit. Yeah. Like if I'm winning on my second attempt, no matter what, we're sending the third. Yeah. Or that's what I need for you know what I mean. Like yeah. that's just my mentality. Yeah. Right. So but. we're going we're going into it, and then um, we're calculating the numbers on what I need to win, and then it's like uh, eight eighty seven or uh, eight ninety one or something like that is the kilo conversion that we thought that I needed to win. So we're like, all right, eight ninety one, whatever it is. And then the meat director comes over. He's like, hey, he's like, that's gonna put you at a tie with Peter. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm 30 pounds lighter than Peter, so then that would mean I'd win. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, this no, is the no, jungle. No. Like, like, winner, you got to win to win. He's like, if you guys tie, you guys are going to split the money. You're going to split the title. I'm like, fuck that. We're not tying. So I was like, all right, what do I need to win? And then there, so then it was 890, 898. So I was like, all right, 898. But then I'm like, wait, well, that's not 900. So I want to change it to 900. But they, but after I've put in my second attempt, like, or it's put in twice, you can't change it. Uh, so eight ninety eight was was the number, and I, again I, I'm going to get mad about. But imagine if I would have pulled that and two pounds shy, <laughs> like so, uh, so whatever. But again, I can't change it anymore. But that's what I needed to win. And that was the goal was to win. So I didn't give a fuck. I was like, no, I'm fucking winning. So Peter pulled eight eighty one. So we knew I needed to pull the eight ninety eight to win. And uh, mind you, if I hit that bench, <laughs> same thing as fucking Kern. Yeah. So uh, we load up. We loaded up, and then. Um, Mind you, the I, the place is going fucking bad. I'm the last deadlift. I'm closing it out. Yeah, same thing so as Kern. All hyped up. Same it's thing as Kern. Guy. Right. Every- and uh, just like at Kern, though, I'm the last one. If I pull it, I win. Yeah. And all the glory. Yeah. And uh, I'm going. I got all my boys on the side. G and all all my guys out there from Australia. Who are, we're all friends. We all talk to well, each other. We were hyped up here in our right, fucking right, right. stupid fucking chairs. Exactly. Man. Yeah. So everyone's going fucking nuts. The yeah. hair standing up. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. And I just I was told myself I was like, just. No matter what, you just ride that bitch. You know what I mean? Like, what are you? Gonna, I, I just knew I wasn't gonna let go because I dropped the last one. So all I could think about was hands, hands. My mom and this motherfucker yeah. go. And it was eight ninety eight, and I, I fucking gave it, gave it hell. Got it up to above mid knee, like just above the knee. And it was like most people can walk out from there. Me, I don't. That's a that's a sticking yeah. point for me. Well, that's a, so so many people that watch are like, why didn't you get it? Like you got, you know, I'm like, no, that's a like, sticking hey, point. That's- Fucking goddamn 898 pounds. Right, That's why I didn't get weight. it. Yeah. But I didn't drop that bitch. <laughs> yeah. I held on to it, and I started yeah. to see stars. You see the shake? And yeah. I, was, I, I dropped it. I was like, Ugh. so it, you know. You see stars? I think, oh, but, yeah. but so uh, that- I think um, you could have comfortably comfortably taken second place. I could have comfortably taken second. But you, you went for, he went for first. 
He fucking went for the win. So if I pulled 881, I would have beat Odell by like 10 pounds, and I would have yeah. lost to Peter by like 10 or 15 yep. pounds. And then, and which would have been a, a safe And you number. ended up taking second, right? I took third because I went for oh, the win. Oh, yeah, so he fucking went for the fucking... Well, I wasn't yeah. going to go... I wasn't going right, to try to yeah. chip Odell who's hurt. Yeah. Because that's bitch. Well, and then, but and you I wasn't going for the win. Yeah, yeah I was going for the yeah. win either way. I was <laughs> so like, he could have comfortably taken... Uh, Third or second, second, one fifteen yeah, grand or something. He, like. went, he went for the win, and it was very ambitious. Yeah, but that's a fucking winner's mentality, yep. man. I, was, yep. I, I remember we're on the side. And I'm talking to Chad, my mm-hmm. coach, and then Chad's doing the math and telling me what I need to win and everything. And I'm just like, and Chad's like, "Fuck, man, you need to, you got to play eight ninety eight. And I was like, "I got it." And he's like, "Go get it," and I, I thought I had it. <laughs> I well, thought I had it. Like, yeah, sometimes but- it doesn't hit. That's how it fucking goes, man. Yep. Yeah. And I missed. And uh, and it, it's weird. I wasn't even upset. Like, I just kind of knew. I knew that I gave it everything. I, I was upset about the bench because I knew if I gave myself a better opportunity, I would yeah. have had a more realistic deadlift just like at fucking Kern. Yep. But, uh, again, it's just uh, it wasn't where it was. But the cool thing about that meet, man, like um, when it was over, we were, we were separated from the audience, right? And they went on a different way and all this shit. And, like, dude, we're in Australia. I'm never going to do this again probably. And um, these people – spent this money to come here to see me. Like the least I could do is interact with them. You know what I mean? Right. So after the meet, like, and everyone's clearing out, I was like, man, I want to go meet all these fucking people. So I got through the sideway in the lobby and then like a couple of people see like, Oh shit, there's Brandon. And then like, it was so dope, bro. They like all like, came over. I'm here to see yeah, you right now. Right. Yeah. And they all came over. And I, I spent an hour, you know, talking with everyone, shaking hands, giving right on. all every, every piece of gear I had, I gave away. Yeah. Like here, that's yours. That's yours. This is yours. Anything I can give them, I gave them. Brandon's a good person. Yeah. That's why we love him. Thanks. I got to take a piss. Again? Yeah. I, I have Get a very it. small bladder. It's Get very it. tiny. Okay. So we're back. I took a pee. Um, shit, I ruined my fucking book placement. So you, so we're at Big Dogs and you're going for this 898 and you're pulling, but did we already say that? Yeah, I picked? missed. And then we, the event was over and then uh, I yeah. went out to meet the, uh, the audience. Yeah. That's what, like, yeah. you're. Brandon Allen, man of the people. Man, man of, the, of the people. Man of the fucking people. Uh, that's why I love you, dude. Nice. Like, you're, you're such a nice guy. <laughs> you know? but, yeah, so we go out there. I give. I literally give away everything but my singlet because I had no other way to get. I was was gonna go home in my underwear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I'm sure someone probably would have been down for that. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, we did that. We had we had blast, and then um. You know, we stayed in Australia for a week after because me and my wife were setting, celebrating our honeymoon, which was two and a half oh, right years on. delayed. But um, it, we just planned it so poorly because I was so big and I just got done doing a meet. Yeah, not no, like you're we fucking crashed. Around. You're crashed, yeah, we dude. couldn't walk. We couldn't do anything. Yeah. We went to like the, I wanted to see like the wildlife out there, like the natural wildlife. So we went to like a habitat where like you can see the koalas and kangaroos and things like that yeah every fucking park bench we walked by i had to spend 10 minutes on it was so bad gotta take a break yeah gotta take a break break. like nothing like what you did what you did at in australia was fucking but dude like so i um when i started competing in crossfit i do like a one-day competition you have three to five events or something like that and for the next week i'm just like so low yeah, and I, and I, I didn't understand. I was like, "What is this? What, like, why do I? Why do I suck?" But you were fucking crashed. Like, yeah. so if if you're a competitor, if you do a competition, and if you're fucking depressed for the next week, that's normal. Oh yeah, totally, <laughs> so, totally. Yeah. Down the post yeah. blues. But you're in what? You're in Australia. We're in Australia. One time, yeah, we gotta to make the best. And, yeah. So my pops was out there, and we went and did a wine. No taste. shit, your dad went. My dad went. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, so we went and did some wine tasting, which was cool because I wasn't going to pay for all that. you're just trying to do the best you I'm can. I'm just trying to survive, bro. Yeah, like, uh, I'm just, uh, eyes are shut. Rethinking everything. Blood, and, yeah. Eyes are just bloodshot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Miserable. Blood's just chapped and I just yeah. don't want to walk. And, uh, it's like, I'm sorry, everybody. Uh, I just Sorry, wish, I suck. Uh, yeah. So, but, so, yeah, we tried to enjoy Australia the best we can, but it was mainly just me smoking weed and hanging out in the hotel room. And then, um, you know, we had we got some yeah, ecstasy and shit. We wanted to go party and have a good time. <laughs> yeah. Fucking, dude, Australians, man, like, it's just not the same as Vegas. You know what I mean? We're spoiled out here. <laughs> like, I go to their Experiment Rhino, their strip club, and, like, we thought it's going to be dope. You know, I had 10 grand cash, like, a bunch of fucking e were like, getting ready to have a good <laughs> fucking time and celebrate. It's nice. Yeah, they, they were not about, these girls were smoking up. They're not, not with the business. They don't, without, you know, going into too much detail, they just weren't down. You know what I mean? When he fucking talks, what's up? You know? <laughs> yeah, so it just went, it, it was weird. Anyways, so uh, yeah, we spend the week out there. We walk around, do the tourist shit the best I can. And dude, Australia is like mini fucking Tokyo. 
because you're right by Indonesia. And uh, so there's tons of Asian markets and tons of Asian food, which is actually phenomenal. Because oh, right on. Australian food is fucking trash. So is trash. it kind of like British? Yeah, so they're infiltrated by England. Yeah. So it's all fucking non-salted, <laughs> non-sugared bullshit. Tiny portions, one cup. Oh my god! Are they normal? <laughs> are they normal people portions or are they? They weren't American they like... portions, all right? Yeah, <laughs> Brandon American. <laughs> right. It's it's so. Their I'm, and mind you, yeah. I'm like purposely starving myself, like eating very little because I want to. And I'm like fucking popping pills and like I just want to lose weight before we get on that flight home. You just know? trying to fit between the armrests. Yeah, I just want to fit in that armrest and flight fit home. In that's all I want. Dude, I didn't. I was so like. That feeling, you know, after you're done and it didn't go great and everything, I was like, I don't, I don't want, I don't. How am I going to sit on that plane? And I was like, Can we take a cruise ship home? Like, is there another yeah, option? Dude, yeah. I was like, Is there a different option? Like, how <laughs> much is it for first class? Can we Twenty five grand. Can we fly as freight? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted anything dude, other than from, that just, situation. Like, yeah, we we um, Stacey and I did a vacation in uh, England and Ireland, and then on the way home, we were kind of burned out from vacation. We were like, how much is it to upgrade to first class? And it was 5K per person. Oh, my God. And, like, the thing is, is we were so burnt out just on vacation, we considered it. And that was that would have been all of our money. Right, right. <laughs> but we considered it. So, yeah. For two, for two <laughs> chairs. I was already at five yeah, grand a seat just, just for the rent. fucking yeah. economy. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no, so upgrade was, like, 25 grand. Just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Might as well be mm -hmm. a million. We're going to spend yeah. on that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, you know, I, you know, I, I tell people, like, I, I didn't give Australia a fair chance, obviously. So when mm -hmm. I talk shit, like, I'm just talking shit because of the circumstances. No, nah, you, weren't, you weren't there on vacation. You no, were there, I was there to work. fucking business, man. Yeah, we were there to work. And then the fucking post crash. Yeah, you can't enjoy that shit. But. And then when, when I got home from Australia, I, I had never been so mentally done with with the sport. Really? Yeah. yeah. Why? Because uh, it didn't go great. And then I felt like I did all that for nothing. You know, what, what's, what's interesting is from our perspective, that went great. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the first. It's the first meet I've ever done that I didn't win. Yeah. Uh, so that's 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 the champion fucking mindset. Yeah, right. Because right. mm, from our hard. from our perspective, because no. from where like here I like I I watched that I watched every fucking lift yeah. at that meet, and I was I was so happy to know you. I was just happy to fucking know you, man, because you did so good, and I was like. I know this fucking guy. In yeah, my head, I was contemplating suicide. I, I was like, man, yeah. it's fucking stupid. Not worth it. The, yeah. But that's the that's the champion mindset. Yeah. And no you gotta be shit, a little crazy. You were, you were so. I was depressed. Yeah. I came home. I was depressed as fuck. And plus, when losing sucks. That's that's like like yep. that's a thing, man. And me and you are in this the same in that. Is there's first place. And there's fucking, else. Th there's everything, like, there's, 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 there's only winning. Yeah, first place and then everything else. And and I don't to, want everything else. I could, first. I could never, even if, even if I fucking had two legs, I could never accomplish what you've accomplished in strength. But what, genetically, what, I'm a little bigger than you. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> so what? But so what? Like, but what you've accomplished, um, I could never accomplish. And, and you're not even happy with that. It's, I was it's unsatisfied. Fun. Yeah. It's, I got a, I got a little taste of that gold, just enough to mm -hmm. fucking smell it, and they mm -hmm. fucking took it away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when I got home, I was so defeated. I uh, obviously coming off steroids and everything that mentally is very emotionally hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. You just feel like a piece of shit. You know, you go being on cloud nine, feeling like a piece of shit. And then I was so beat up. My knee was so fucked up. Yeah. Um, mind you, my knee, I, I hung on for that squat. Thank God. Yeah. But uh, my knee was so fucked up when we got home. Another MRI, and it was like, who? His, you got lucky. Yeah. So yeah. we needed to let the knee heal. So I take eight weeks off, not doing anything. Mind you, I told myself I was going to take a break after big dogs and I was going to lose weight and all this. After you do like, you know, I, did, I guess I didn't do terrible, terrible. After the points I had to know like, okay, I could definitely win this. I just ha you know, there's a few little mistakes I made where we can win this meet. You know, we're going to win it next year. Yeah. So I'm already thinking about next year. Yeah. And that's the wrong thing to do when you're trying to take time off, right? Because <laughs> you can't help, already, your, you can't help no, yourself, can't help man. Myself. Yeah. I'm already talking to the meet director. We're already trying to plan flights. We're already Setting trying to put the, the hotel room. So I'm like, okay, I guess we're not taking time off. So I also knew that I needed to get revenge on Kern. Because I dropped that fucking deadlift. And I know, like, at this point where my strength was, I was I'm going to fucking stomp on all these old doggies over there. So we get home, and then, you know, we take eight weeks off, and then now it's time to start prepping for Kern. I have an MRI done on my knee. Probably shouldn't be prepping for Kern, but I'm going to prep for Kern. Because it was like a torn MCL or something torn like meniscus. that? Torn uh, meniscus. Well, meniscus was torn. It was a partially torn patella tendon at this time. Okay. So, yeah. Which is controls your knee and everything. So, yeah. um, again, I start training and prepping for it, and uh, 
I mean, to say squatting went great was, would be an absolute lie. I was getting strong, but my knee was ha- literally hanging on by thread. And I, I could feel it. I knew it was bad. I knew it was fucked up. But in my head, I was like, okay, if I can just ride this out to Kern, squat like 1,050 at Kern, something nasty. Casual. Right, and then, yeah, and then, and then Casual. I'll take time off. Yeah. But that wasn't then, true. Yeah. Right. I wasn't going to take time off then either. Yeah. So, you know, that wasn't true. And again, 1,050, who knows if I would have been able to do that. That's just where, where, where else mindset set at because you have to dream big, right? And uh, so prepping for Kern, um, damn, man, that was a rough day. March 8th, 2019. Is that, is that when it was? March 8th, yeah. yeah. So you uh, you were there. Uh, weren't you there after? You were there for the initial... I came to give you my crutches. That's right. Yeah. So you, yeah, you weren't there, but you know the crew was there, and you were coming or whatever was happening, and um, we're warming up for a squat. We're filming a video for Iron Rebel. This video is on Iron Rebel's YouTube. If you guys wanted to watch, it's pretty fucking nasty. But me and Andy Hong, my partner in my uh, podcast, uh, um, that huge Asian guy, who you guys might know him as, but we were doing a squat session together. And um, <laughs> literally, that huge Asian yeah, guy is his Asian Instagram, guy right? And the, and the, pod, the broadcast guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yep. So we're uh, we're squatting together. Iron Rebels there. They got a film crew. The filming it and everything. And we're pretty fucking stoked, having a good day. And um, I just I squatted eight, uh, maybe it was eight eighty one, and my knee popped like bad, like. Oh, so you felt a prior? Oh yeah, really. And yeah. and what what happened then was the tear that happened. Let's say it was barely hanging on like this. It now it was hanging on like this. So. That tear happens. I'm standing outside. I can't even squat my body weight down to depth because without my knee feeling it's going to explode. And I'm like, Jenny, I don't know if I can do this. You know, and Jenny's like, they don't. Like, you don't have, you don't have to. Yeah. And I was like, oh. I was like, I, I have to. What do you mean? I, I have to. They're here filming it. You know, that's just the meathead mentality. Right. I was like, I have to. I was like, it'll be okay. I'll survive. How many shitty squats has, have I survived? You know, I'll yeah. survive this one too. It's only 925. I've done fucking much more. So. But listen to Jenny. <laughs> she listened to Jenny. <laughs> so we get that squat and I pick it. Just fucking. Alpha, complete, complete confidence, like, I got this, bitch. And I go down, and I hit the hole, and right when I hit the hole, just two to three different pops, pop, real quick, into my knee, and then all, and then I went. So I'm squatting down, and the next thing I know, I'm like, whoo, yeah. and I just shift over. And the reason why I shifted over, I had a knee injury. We didn't know what it was. But I shift over, and now I stand up, 925 pounds, no one touched the bar. No one touched me with uh, one fucking leg. This video is there, man. Yeah. He, he fucking, you're. You got it? Your, yeah. Your quads. Get the one fuck leg. out of here. Yeah. Quads separated from your patella. Completely entirely. separated. Uh, so, so my so right like, leg was dead. My, my one legged deadlift. <laughs> He, is, so you can do some you can pounds. do nine hundred on your uh, leg. Well, like, fuck, <laughs> fuck this guy. Fuck this guy for sure. Man. I got the world record pistol yeah, squat. Yeah, shut the fuck up. There's fuck this guy. Yeah, no, he the stood world up. Record so pistol. nine nine twenty five, and you and 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 um, maybe I don't know if I, I would like to edit this video in. To the video podcast we'll see if we can i don't yeah, know i'll try but and do that. I'll you can yeah like brandon is in the fucking hole you see my knees 900 shift. yeah dude i i can't even like i like when you post it i can't even go back and watch I don't it, like it I, I don't yeah so uh to to be clear brandon has 925 pounds on his back Yep. And he goes down, he's in the hole, hits depth, and he's coming up, and immediately he knows something is wrong. And he's like, ah! But he stands it up, and he says, help me to the rack. So he he, he squats 925 on one good leg and, and a fucking, his quad separated from his knee. Dude, that's a fucking serious injury. I didn't realize and, how and bad it there's, was. There's injuries in sports. And there's serious injuries. That's the front. That's the front part of your leg, right? Mm-hmm. So the front muscle on your leg completely separated from where it connects to the to knee. The this knee. is this was this was your first real fucking serious, life-changing yeah. fucking injury. Yeah. Yep. Um this was my AK round. This <laughs> <laughs> was my well, AK I, round yeah. to the knee. Yeah, that's like for real, man. Yeah. Because this um it, You remember how delusional I was though? Like, so even in the filming of that video, if you guys go watch it on YouTube, if you care to, you'll see how insanely delusional I was. I'm standing there talking. Like, first like off, I when I, I stepped the weight in, and then we, I knew something was wrong. The guys knew something was wrong, too, because 925 should have been very fast. And it was a grinder because I did it with one fucking leg. And then... um. <laughs> I mean, Strongman Tom's behind me. ridiculous the way he talks about yeah. this, man. And the way you talk about it is fucking insane to us. We can't be. imagine. Yeah. So Strongman Tom's behind me, who I trust with my life on a big squat, because he'll, he'll sacrifice himself to save me. But he knows I'm I'm in pain because he knows I'm I don't squeal or I'm like I was like oh well well you know on the rack end so he knew something was wrong so he he carries me 
I try, you see, I try to step on my leg and it just, and I just go back into Tom, like the leg didn't work. Like my quad tendon literally severed yeah. completely off and rolled up into my hip. My patella tendon snapped. My kneecap shifted over about three inches to the other side. It was almost round to the other side of my knee. Was it completely like misshapen when oh. it, when it, like, I mean, I didn't know it at the time. I, so I, in my head, I thought I tore something in my knee. I was like, oh, it might be an MCL, meniscus, ACL. Who knows? We'll be okay. It'll just be a quick little surgery. I'll still be good for this knee. What the? So I'm sitting, I can't even move. Like you look at the video and you can see the separation. I didn't when, know what when, was I, when I showed up, so, so, so that happened. I wasn't there. And, um, uh, Jenny called me and she called me crying. And I was like, oh, this is, oh shit, what's going on? And she, she asked if I had like spare crutches or something. And I was like, no, I don't have spare crutches, but you can have my crutches, you know? Um, yeah. Still got them. And, and, <laughs> yeah. With, with the purple. Like the nice camo pouches yeah. and everything, man. Yep. You know? Um, and, and, and like, as soon as, like, the, the tone of her voice when she called me, I just, I was like, hey, anything you need right now. No and she doesn't crush easy, so. Yeah, no, fuck no. And, and I got there, but you were in high spirits, man. Yeah. And so. I was optimistic I was like, as fuck. Yeah. I was like, no, 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 I'm still going to do this meat. Ooh, yeah. Maybe we'll just add some growth that's, hormone. That's so much like <laughs> me when I got shot. I was like, yeah, it's right. like no problem. You know, I'll get right. back to work. Um, I didn't even want and, people to feel sorry for me. I was like, yeah. oh, stop. Like, no, no, yeah. no. Like, I'm going to still do this meat. No, we'll just, put some just, topical on it. Okay. It'll yeah. be fine. You're, so you're, mind you, this happens on a Friday. Um. I'm not going to go to the ER. What the fuck are they going to do? I got to wait to see a fucking <laughs> knee specialist, like, is to find out what's going on. And I have a knee doctor. He's, you know, he's my, you know, he's one of the he, best there is in Vegas. He's my guy. He's my guy. So, um, we, we reach out to him and let him know what happened. And then, uh, he's like, okay, I'll see you Monday morning. So he gave me an appointment. So this happens on Friday. I have all weekend where I'm trying to convince myself that my knee isn't bad. Mind you, I can't even put, like, it, it doesn't work. Like, you they're, it's separated. Right. So I try to walk in. It was just like, you're probably your prosthetic. Just goes. Man, like I one saw, of your old mechanical prosthetics. But I, I still have a hamstring like, intact, so yeah. maybe not as flimsy. But, yeah, it was like that. It was just gut. So I'm bucking around the house on Derek's fucking crutches. And we go in to see the doctor, and I'm just, I'm still so stupid thinking that, like, <laughs> we're going to be okay. Well, this, the, like, when I got shot, I got, I, I thought I got shot in the calf. And so I thought I would be back to work in right. a couple fucking weeks. You know, I thought I'd be good to go. No, no worries. No harm done. Um, but when that fucking reality hits you, it's gutting. I don't even know if I fully accepted it still. I mean, I definitely probably have now. Know, yeah. but it took a while because like I'm in there and I'm, I'm just telling him like, you know, he's, he follows my Instagram. He saw what happened. He's like, he knew what had happened already. He didn't want to tell me just yet. Like he didn't want to tell me that over the phone. Oh, this is your doctor. Yep. Fuck it. No, so, no he, so I'm standing there in his office and he's like, hey, Brandon, he goes, I need you to lift your right leg forward. So I'm like, okay. So I lean over to my left side and I push my right leg forward, but I'm using my hip. Yeah. So he's like, no, 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 no. He's like, don't move your hip. He puts his hand on my hip. He's like, move your leg forward. I'm like, the fuck? I'm like, I can't. I was like, I, I gotta, he's like, he's like, he goes, Brandon, he goes, your quad's completely. I was like, quad i was like no it's in my knee he's like that's where the quad attaches oh shit he's like and that's where it's still torn off i was like well I was like, do i need to have surgery he's like oh he's like if you ever want to fucking walk yeah. you need to have surgery yeah. so you know he, i'm like what does this mean like what are, what are we talking about here like what am i out am I, am I gonna have to miss this meet he's like you're gonna be done for a year at least he's like but if you do everything right he's like which i know you will and you recover quick he's like in a year he's like you'll be able to squat a thousand pounds again he's like your knee will be stronger no shit that was your prognosis yeah wow so he told me my knee would be stronger than it was when that happened whenever this happened so uh, that uh that i will be able to squat a thousand pounds again so i'm just like okay so we got something to look forward to right. remember how intent i was in my recovery I, every day yeah. stretch i was doing whatever the fuck it took to get my knee bright yeah and I, no and Whatever it took. And and we were doing pretty good financially and stuff. So I was like pretty happy with my life. I was like, okay, we just got a little injury to get through. Yeah. Things will get better. I went and bought myself a little new Harley. Injury. Like, dude, it was a fucking yeah. real injury. But in my head, it still wasn't. A, it wasn't. But, it was know, something little. I just want to, you know, like um, that prognosis is a big deal. Like you had fucking hope. Man. Yeah. And like the, the prognosis they gave me when I got shot was that I would walk unassisted someday. That they told me like the best case scenario for me was I would walk without a cane. Right. And that's when I was like, no, fucking cut my leg off. Yeah. Right. Like, that is not fucking good enough. Right. So you got a, a, a good prognosis there. That's, oh, that's, yeah. that's so that was encouraging. But the fucking dude, knee pain is like nothing well, else. The big thing that happened <laughs> yeah. in my life too, that changed everything. So, yeah. um, the, uh, 
you know, like I said, we were doing well and everything like that. And I was pretty stoked. I, I've ridden bikes my whole life and yeah. Harleys. You know, I love mm -hmm. Harleys. Yeah. So I had a Road King, which I loved. But, you know, out here in Vegas, it's hot. And I wanted the big front fairing. And I wanted to get a Road Glide. Anyone that knows what I'm talking about knows what I'm talking about. So uh, I sell my Road King and I went and bought a new Road Glide. I'm pretty fucking stoked. It's a badass bike. And I'm like, hell yeah, you know, like use this for commuting around, save some money on gas. Plus, I just like being on a bike. So I'm like, a couple weeks into training, like a uh, squatting to depth with body weight. Yeah. Like getting range of motion so, back. So he, he's gone through this quad separation tear and he's fucking overcome that, which was difficult. And now he's back on the road to recovery. And so three months after this incident happened after my surgery, excuse me, four months after the incident, three months after the surgery, you know, I'm on my bike. I'm pretty stoked. I'm able to walk around. I'm able to squat my to body weight. My knee is still swollen. Like, you know, looks like shit and, Everything like that, but whatever. I'm, I'm moving. I'm happy. So I'm on my way to my gym, and um, I'm fucking driving down Craig Road Ranch, and uh, it's a 45 mile an hour speed limit on that road, and I'm going 45, 50, whatever. And I'm in the far right lane. This guy's in the far left lane. It's a four lane highway. He uh, missed his turn, and he decided he was going to make that turn at 50 miles an hour. And I watched. You no know, tenant windows. I could see him. Never once even looked over his shoulder. Just, Just stopped. Turned it. full speed into me. 50 miles an hour in my Harley. I got clipped by this guy and uh, sent me about 10, 15 feet in the air, came down on my head. Thank God I was wearing a fucking DOT helmet. Uh, came down on my head, whiplash, hit my back on the ground. And um, it's one of the, one of the gnarliest, that was the gnarliest injury of my life. The gnarliest, and it, it fucks with me to this day. I still driving in the car, fucking freak out at times. I freak out, but just like, you know, sure, yeah. over yeah. vigilant now or thinking about things. But, uh, Gave me good, man. And um, the weirdest thing about it all is that I didn't go out. Like, uh, you know, I, and I've never been knocked out. So I guess that's not as weird. But I remember, like, it's so crazy how you can process all this information. At yeah. once. But I'm going. I look over. I'm like, this fuck. I knew. I was like, he's going to hit me. I downshift, downshift. She starts coming into me. I fucking hit on the brakes. Boom. And when we hit, I remember it was so loud. Mm -hmm. I, couldn't even, I couldn't even believe how loud it was. Like, And then I'm in the air. And I'm trying to grab the ground as my legs are coming over me. And I couldn't reach the ground. And I was like, oh, this is going to be bad. Because I could have caught the ground. I could have, I mean, it just been a much less of an impact. So when I hit, my head hits first. And then my back whiplashes. Boom. And mind you, I'm 330 pounds at the yeah. fucking time. And when I hit the ground, boom, I bounce. Boom. And I'm laying there on the ground. And then I thought, I initially thought, I was like, oh, this isn't that bad. Because I'm, I'm still awake. I'm looking at my bike. I'm, I'm hearing cars. <laughs> I'm still awake. And then I go to move, and that's where things got sketchy because I, I was completely, I had no movement in my lower half of my body. Yeah. Couldn't even feel anything, uh, no, let alone move my legs. I'm like laying there on the ground trying to straighten out, and I couldn't. Right. And um, the, I, I knew I was going to be okay upper body-wise because my my body was on fire because the ground was like 120 degrees. This is Vegas, like 110 feel the that heat. Day. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm burning on the ground. I'm like, give yep. me something. I'm burning on the ground. And then some lady, like, puts the jacket down. Like, they lift me up and set me on that waiting for EMT and paramedic to get there. And um, this fucking piece of shit's like, oh, do I need to stay? Like, the dude. Was, <laughs> yeah, bro. It was, it was a rough the day. the truck said that? You got to oh, hit fuck. me. Said that. I, was trying to, fuck, I was trying to get to my fucking bike so I can get my gun to shoot his ass. That's how yeah, pissed I was. Yeah. Do I need to stay? Yeah, yeah motherfucker. You, you need yeah. to stay. You're going to fucking yeah. catch some lead. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> yeah, I love that statement. Right. Yeah. That's that's how uh, that's uh, where my head was at. I was so I'm pissed. Young. And then the the when the responding fire unit gets there, they like they you know firefighters work out. They knew who I was. I'm like mm -hmm. oh shit, like friend. So they're like, how's your knee? Because they know I just had this knee surgery. And I was like, oh fuck, I know I have no idea. I can't move my legs, guys. So um, they stretch me out and get me on the stretcher. And then um, it's probably been about twenty minutes at this point. And then that's when I was able to start moving my feet. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe I'm not paralyzed. Like I, I literally thought I was gonna be oh, yeah. paralyzed. I was like, oh, this, I was trying to process how this yeah. is gonna work, but I was able to move my feet, but I still couldn't feel anything. So I, I know that's kind of bad with nerves. I didn't know what was going on. So it, you know, it's just my luck. It's one of those days where their their typical unit that they have, like ambulance that they have, was broke down in the shop. So they had their backup one that has no air conditioning. Like it was middle of summer and just yeah. sweltering hot. And then, you know, it's a 20 minute drive to the hospital. It seemed like it was fucking forever on the freeway, bouncing around my back. They're trying to keep me stable in case my spine's broken. They don't want anything to come apart. Yeah. And in my head, they're, they're pretty convinced my back is broken. So every bump we hit, I'm like, Oh, like, yeah. is that the one that's going <laughs> to do that it? The like, one? Yeah, you know, like, is that the one? Right. So we get there to the hospital and, um, you know, they, they rip your clothes off you right when you get there. 
And um, I was lucky I didn't have bad road rash because uh, I just came down and hit. My knees were all cut up. My elbows and arms were cut up, but nothing bad, you know. I've had way worse road rash on a BMX bike, so very lucky. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the the only pro to being 300-plus pounds is you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, so they get me on the MRI table, which is anyone that's had an MRI with a back injury. It's a metal table. There's no padding or anything. It's very uncomfortable. Um, I have terrible luck in MRI machines. I've been stuck in almost every one I've ever been in. And he's claustrophobic. Oh, yeah. Let's, yeah. Not, yeah. let's <laughs> not let this day be any different. We're going to make sure he gets stuck in the They MRI do the machine. fingers yeah. up the butt right away, too? Uh, no, I didn't get it fucking You didn't do that? No. I, my back injury, they have to check for your rectal tone. And so every stop I made, I no. got sodomized. What? By the no, they nerd. did in the very beginning. Yeah, yeah they totally it. did, yeah. right. Yeah. No, I oh, think shit. of it. Yeah. What is this now? For your back injury... Your uh, your rectal tone, your the sphincter down there, it gets loose if if you have pat paralysis. It's separate. And oh, so shit. so that one of the first things they do is shove Thank their you. fingers up your one? ass. I don't care. No shit. Yeah, Dude, I've only been I've so I um I the only time I got raped anally, um in my life I I I, I went down as I was there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish I um I I I went down as a heat cat. Um, one time, and we'll tell this story maybe some other time. But I had a thermometer in my butthole when I woke up. But so, oh, for real! So when you Fingers. have a back injury, yeah. Yeah, so check I went, your. They did it at the hold first. On. You, you I don't call know. They it, went in my a, I think they touched it. You call it a rectal tone. They are checking your rectal tone, oh. and my and apparently I had good rectal. tone. And if tone. you have a oh, if yeah, you have a loud tone, <laughs> they're like, They've oh, this gets a lot of use. This, this <laughs> guy's this guy's butthole is really loud. Yeah, he's he's a pegger. Paralyzed. Yeah, he's a pegger. So, so yeah, so, so I'm laying there, get on the hospital, get on the MRI bed. Of course, I get stuck in the fucking MRI machine. Now, they decide that they're, they have their techs come in and work on the machine while my head is still stuck in it. <laughs> so I'm, and I can't move. And I'm like trying, I'm like, guys, you don't understand. You need to get me off this fucking bed. Get me out of here now. They're like, you can't get, I'm like, no, 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 you're not getting it. Pull me the fuck out now. So they pull me out. And then I'm, so I'm sitting in this room on the bed. I can't fucking move. And it's so uncomfortable, you know, and like uh feeling starting to come back, which is obviously fucking good. So I'm starting to get a little optimistic. I'm sitting there forever waiting for the other MRI to open up. And then that one opens up. So then they get me in that one. And I had a CAT scan and a bunch of other things as well. Anyways, now uh, I'm done with the MRIs and I'm in the hospital bed and the police officers there and getting a statement, whatever. They took my fucking gun and all this shit. And, um, I'm waiting for uh, waiting for my wife to get there, and she finally shows up. Uh, my, like she finally says, she had better things to do. She got work and came as soon as she could. Yeah, God damn it, right. Jenny, yeah. hurry up! Right, yeah. <laughs> right. So uh-huh. she came as soon as she could, and then um, then it was a little relief, you know. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. I'm gonna be okay, right? And then the doctor comes in, and then um, it was the timing was kind of impeccable with all this. And the doctor comes in, she's like, Mr. Allen, I don't know how to tell you this, and I'm like. Here it comes. You're she, gay. No. <laughs> she, that butthole exam didn't go yeah. very well. The, the, the blood <laughs> tests are back. You are definitely gay. So a little you know, too much yeah. room in your butthole. <laughs> <we're> <laughs> we checked your rectal tone. It's and, it's loud. and you're gay. It's yeah. <laughs> she was like, yo, your size is probably what saved you. And I'm no, like, oh, great. Right. That's that's good news. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, she basically said because of how much mass I had mm-hmm. that the impact, I was able to absorb it pretty well, and that's what kept my spine intact. You'd been training you, your you know entire what, and, life and for you, that. You know, you know Derek Carver. Yeah. Um, so Derek Carver says that's what saved his life. when he. So Derek Carver is a uh, above-knee amputee. He was in the 82nd Airborne Division off, uh, 82nd Airborne Division officer type um, um, involved in an IED somehow. And and um, he, he he says that his size saved his life because he was flown fucking forever, but he was a big fucking guy, you know. Yeah, he's a big boy. Yeah, like mm-hmm. two fifty at the time. When so it happened. was your size that saved you. Size no saved shit. me. Yeah. So you, I also, so you'd have been if it was me, I would have been probably dead. Dead. They said yeah, a normal no person shit. probably would have died. Yeah. So now um now Dude, I know you, there's something you, wrong. You know though. what? You know what's fucked up about this story, Brandon? And I feel so bad as a friend. So this was um. Must have been 2019 at the time or something like that, and 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 I had just had twins, yeah. and I was so fucking absent yep. during. But I, but I was I was I was but, <laughs> but, but like but I was so absent from your when you tore your quad. I didn't have the time to come be there as a supportive friend. And then not only did you tear your quad, you you went through that and you came through, but then you got hit by a fucking bike, and I was just like on my bike, what my car? Y- yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, and I just, I, I felt so bad at that time. 
but I was fucking bogged down here uh, uh, with the new twins. Right. And you're going through all this shit. And I was like, fuck, dude, I've been there. I've been on the fucking... Rec- I know how hard that shit is. And I sometimes wondered if you were upset with me as a friend for not being there more or something like that. But I, w- I had my hands full here with the twins. And I just... I, I kind of knew what you were going through in your life. And I just... I felt bad that I wasn't there more. I forgive you, brother. Okay, thanks, man. No, I, I appreciate you. that. But that was, it's, it's the fucking, you went through the real deal, man. It was like, real deal, for the, sure. Like, Because, mind you, like, we just, I was just on the couch, you know. Mm-hmm. And then this happens, and then, like, I know, like, oh, my back's not broken. Okay, but what, what's going on? You know, like, because something, yeah. something's going and on. You're on the recovery bed, and I said, like, because I was on the CPM for six months, and just, like, being down, being alone, your fucking thoughts and things like that. And, oh, yeah. And here I am. I'm a guy who's been through that before, but I can't be there for you because I got fucking six-month-old twins chaos. in the house. It's well, Everything was let's, chaotic. Let's say this. Yeah. And I never thought that I was suicidal. But I knew how people can get there with what I was going through. I was like, man, there is an easier way out. Yeah. But again, that wasn't an option. But I also knew, I was like, I, it made me a little more empathetic you to people. You understood it. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes I'm like, how can you be suicidal? What the fuck's the matter with you, pussy? Like, what yeah. the fuck? And then once I was in there and just so helpless, yeah. everything just took in front of me in one it's, instant. It's, like, yeah. it's, it's trauma. Like, oh, fuck the, this, the word, The word is trauma. Yeah. And trauma happens physically or mentally. The word, the word is trauma, and yep. it fucks you up. But yeah. It was a rough time. Yeah. So uh, the doctor proceeds to tell me what's going on, and I uh, broke my pelvis, cracked my pelvis, and I, uh, my left socket and my groin, I tore every ligament in there. So I just, so now I, my left leg is dead, dead, dead. Like oh, no shit. movement. So you got this fucking healing torn. So now my bad knee is now my strong yeah. knee. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, there was, I have five claps vertebrae, but that could have been from heavy squatting from prior. Sure. Cause they didn't see it before. Like. Had a bulging disc, <laughs> yeah. right. Had a bulging <laughs> disc, bunch of injuries, elbows fucked, still fucked. So yeah, I got fucked up in that wreck. Yeah. And then, uh, that's crazy. Cause I, I really didn't even know. Like, so like the torn quad was the least of your fucking injuries. That one that, was easy. And that, and that no shit. That one yeah. was easy. The bike is way harder. No shit. Yeah. yeah that one was re- I couldn't move at all, Derek. Like, uh, and then I went, I mind you, when I tore my knee, I was ugh, yeah. full and everything was good. And then I went yeah. down a little bit. So it was yeah. okay mentally. Now I'm down a little bit. Now down even more. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck, like just withering away. Yeah. Life just kicks you in the skinny. dick and then you're down and then it kicks you in the chest. And yep. you're like, how much more can I fucking take? Yep. Man? Oh, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. We can kick <laughs> right, you again. Right. Yeah. We got some more. Yeah. Wait yeah. for a second. Yeah, well, that, so. but that is kind of like I suppose that's maybe kind of similar. It's like when I got shot, I was still fucking motivated, you know. But it, when they told me they were med boarding me, is yeah. when I was like, "Hey, you're now fucking you're, now you're, your goals you're, taken you're, from you. You're you. kicking a man who's down here, yep. you know. And then when you're already down, you get kicked again. Yeah, but I just did a video too, like for Iron Rebel talking shit on how like man, fuck being top fuck about, top about two your, in the world. Like, yeah, I was like, I'm gonna be like number that. one. Yeah. I can't mm-hmm. wait. Yeah. I was so excited and I was so motivated. Mm-hmm. We just opened the new gym. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, it's gonna be fucking great. And then boom. Yeah. Not only that, I lost my fucking bike I just bought. And, yeah. and, this, and we, <laughs> well, we, we didn't get any money from this fucking piece of shit. Really? Yeah. Nothing. I, yeah, we paid out of pocket for shit. So it's it, a whole other issue of its own. But that's just that's our legal system and how it favors mm-hmm. people that aren't hardworking Americans that actually pay into the tax system. And they favor everyone else that doesn't <laughs> pay into the tax system. But we can save that for another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck me. Speaking of next episodes, we're going to have to uh, 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 d- finish this interview. We hit a new milestone, a new accomplishment, achievement unlocked. We filled up all the memory cards um, in our cameras here. That was, that uh, today's episode was about two hours and forty minutes. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the interview. It's kind of a new format I'd like to start doing um, when I have guests on. I, you know, Brandon is thirty, thirty-one years old. How do you get his story in sixty minutes? I don't think that's there's so much to talk about, and I want to get um, um, people's stories out there. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you you didn't mind that it was long. Um, it might be kind of the new standard around here on Savage Saturdays when we have guests. Um, we're going to get Brandon back on the show next week, and we're going to conclude this interview, um, talk about his road to recovery after those uh, uh, back-to-back injuries. But also, Brandon Brandon has been my powerlifting coach um, 
and he knows so much about fucking building strength, building size, and and I want to get his um, take on maybe some of the common questions that I get from um, people that I help on the internet. Like, what is how does what's his approach to building strength? What's his approach to nutrition? You know, fucking motivation, discipline, hard work, things like that. What does Brandon know that we want to know so we can be better? So, hope you enjoyed today's episode. Catch us next week when we conclude our interview with our friend Brandon Allen. I love you guys. Have a good day.